All right, Robin, what's hey. in the news? Well, how long do they keep this urine when you're being tested for steroids in the NFL or the Major League, or Major League Baseball? Because what do you mean? They have retested a sample of Bobby Bonds or Barry Bonds' urine. Right. And now they say he tested positive. You know, these are you urine are samples me. they've been holding. What? They keep the urine all the... I mean, I would think they do the test and then they throw out the urine. Can no, I come clean about something? this urine is from 2004. Oh wow. I have, a great, I have a great revelation. And this is going to be one of those things where I shouldn't say this out loud, but I'm going to... I purchased urine. You're kidding. <laughs> when? <laughs> when did you purchase it? The day after I made that stupid promise to you. <laughs> And I had to throw it the fuck out. I put it behind a bunch of liquor where you, bottles. Where do you go to get it? A uh, kid sold it to me. Are you serious? Because I would think you could know someone who would just piss in a jar for What you. happened was uh, there's a bunch of kids mm. in the town I grew up. Uh, they're all fuck-ups, but they're trying to get on the fire department. Right. So to get But why the... did you ask me to give you a urine test? And I even protested. I said, Artie, I don't want to give you a urine test. Why did you? Like, you were nuts. Yeah. I, that, it. That, that, it sucked. You know you would fail. Well, no. I, I, I'd still be okay with it. I'd still be but clean. Except no. for some you text liquor. And... For some you text liquor and what else? Uh, maybe weed. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, <laughs> you're doing great. No, no, no. I, 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 I was He's next. Clean I was next to somebody who was smoking weed. But oh. I, I, no, that could fail. <laughs> and um, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm not on heroin. But I, I paid five hundred bucks. Oh. And I told the kid, uh, uh, he's trying to get on the fire department, you know, and. Uh, He's like, yeah, this is brutal. I've been, I can't, I haven't smoked pot or done anything for six months. And... Oh, so he's going to get urine for himself. How yeah. gross is it? It's gross. To, I made I him. Mean, I, I, I mean, where do you? What did? What did they sell it to you in a jar? Well, he came over to my place and I made him piss in the. You know, I didn't. I didn't see dick in cup, but right. Uh, he put it in like a Poland spring bottle, and then I transferred it with gloves oh to something else, God. and then I put tin foil around it because it's so gross to look at. Yeah, and then uh, I put it in the back of a bunch of whiskey bottles, and then um, <clears throat> I just threw it out like last week. I forgot. So what I had part it. of you insists to me? I said to you, Art, you, you don't have to do a urine test. I was I don't excited. I tried to. I tried to make it sound like I'm normal. Yeah, but I yearn <laughs> to be normal. I know, but I, I told you, you're never going to pass it. No, no, and, uh, I, I, you couldn't I, pass a urine test ever. Yes, I could. Why don't no, you we, couldn't. Yes, why don't I could. We when? Just put Artie in rehab. Yeah. I'm not in rehab. Why? Because, I'm not, because I'm fine. someone, I, I talked to someone about that, yeah. and they explained to me Artie's got to want. You, could, right. you know, you know, there are yeah. people who go. You know, everyone acts like rehab is the cure. I'm totally you could go, fine. You could go into I'm 95 fine. rehabs and still not be better because you got to want it, guys. I've been clean Look at off. Look, he fought well, it. Well, Steve's a whole. Can, can I just talk about Christ? The guy's bleeding and throwing shit at the. And that may I add, they waited till that happened can i just talk about how um it's just so funny because i want to go pull the tape of how <laughs> insulted and indignant Artie was this is what's great when, about when i said guys. i had to watch Artie pee in a cup and he goes are you insane <laughs> do you think i'm fucking crazy enough to go I'm, I'm, yeah i'm gonna buy urine he fails his first drug test i've already picked the date of his drug test but he can't know the date no, yeah he okay. doesn't know right, it. don't right. worry <laughs> It no, should I be every know. other day or so. Why, what's, what are you yeah, waiting I don't know for? Why there's a special a little, day. Yeah. It should be it's random. Ready. It's random. It's random drug testing. Right, I'll do ahead, whatever the fuck you want. And it should be regular. He doesn't know, and Gary's going to watch his penis in the cup. No, go he's ahead. not. Yes, he is. No, yes. Yeah, well, he has then to. Somebody has to. Doing. He'll bring out a whiz in there. Then I'm not doing it. Then I quit Then you got to walk in the room naked. Uh, then I because quit the show. You have to walk in naked <laughs> because naked. you're going to get a bag of urine in there. You're, you're I'm going to get a bag of urine in your yeah. pants. Where am I going to get a bag? Yeah, yeah. Where will you buy it? You, I mean, you could frisk me before you, I go in. People buy urine to pass drug tests. You seen the Wizenator? It's a fake penis with a bladder. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have the Wizenator on. Sure I don't you have don't. Already, <laughs> where do I have <laughs> it? Well, I, you, don't think, you think it's ridiculous for us to think that you might try to beat a drug test? Uh, that you well, wouldn't pay I, Teddy I, for his urine or something? Uh, Teddy's not. Teddy's I'm just not, saying. I'm giving you, Teddy's you, urine is way too You expensive. know a bunch of people. You, you throw money at everything. Then we'll have a girl. I don't know one person who doesn't do drugs or drink. Where am I getting urine from? No, I bought urine before you accused me of buying yes, it. I did. But if, you, but if you could go back to whatever those days are, I'm wearing a leather jacket, and I have the urine in here in my breast pocket. Are you pocket. serious? Yes. Yeah, so if you look at the tape, it might be like a... You, could see you mean urine? you were carrying Jeez. the urine with you because you felt we were going to do the yeah, urine test? Yeah, he didn't know when the test okay. was going to come. You're officially oh the funniest God. person so I've ever met. I came in here... Meanwhile, you day. weren't even clean I came when in you said I'm going to take a urine test. Yes, I was. Then why would you buy urine? No. No, 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 no. It was the next day. I, 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 I was worried that stuff would show up. Oh. 
Okay. Very worried. All right. Stuff that you take. But I, I haven't done heroin since December 24th. <laughs> but, but, but we were, I haven't. No, but we were giving you a drug test for everything. I know. I, that's why I made a mistake. I should have made it just heroin. Just heroin. I don't, I don't know <laughs> if they make that test. They do. You could just check for opiates. It, it, you know, ignore Coke or anything like this. So just, just yeah, heroin. you could, just you could see. Just there's heroin in you there. You could see specific that. stuff. Uh, uh, all right. Well, anyway, that's a very interesting revelation. But I was always wondering about if the urine stayed... Uh, stayed good. Because then the one guy said, you have a way to keep it warm because it can't be cold. And I was like, oh, fuck. So I would put it in a room with heat every <laughs> next to the boiler. Did you really? I, listen, Howard, I'm crazy. Oh, but my God. I don't want, you know, I want to keep my job here. It's very important to me. But that wasn't a condition of keeping yeah, you Yeah, it was just to go to rehab. See, I had to say it, but that's how mm. good of a person I am. I had to say it. All right, let's go to Robin because yeah, that I'm sounds sorry. crazy. Yeah, no, no, but the urine got real dark as right. the days it went on. Right, stay good. And I was like, does this even look like fresh urine? Right. Well, there were uh, flaws. I am shocked to hear that they saved his urine, but there you go. The samples are believed to contain traces of the previously undetectable designer steroid known as THG or the clear. It was called the clear because it wasn't supposed to show up on tests. The New York Times reported last week that federal authorities had detected anabolic steroids in a urine sample linked to bonds. However, it's unclear if that urine sample and the sample seized in the 2004 raid are the same. Well, an interest to uh, keep up with Artie on the show. I have a confession to make. In my jacket right now, I have a bottle of shit <laughs> I carry with me. What are you carrying that for? I can't tell you exactly why. Oh, and I, when 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 uh, Doctor Drew said the penis and cup thing, I had the urine on me. Oh, you did? Yeah. Jeez. I was gonna take it out. If you guys made me do the test, I was gonna take it out and put it on the table. Oh, that's good. Like, mm. I should have done that. But wow. Well, we didn't test you. You're really an addict. No, Howard. I'm a, I'm a dedicated worker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. Oh. Who All else? Right. I'd break my ass. I'd break my ass. I wish I was a fucking uh, you're in a dark uh, place, longshoreman. Buddy. You're in a dark place. Yeah, well, you're right. Yeah, you are. I'm, uh, But no, I'm okay. I'm okay, I think. Uh, because if I can stay away from the hard shit, my life won't become chaotic. But, uh, Artie, are you going to drink? Yes. No, I haven't had a drink. That's in... not true. How do you know? Because I know. Okay, well... Let's go penis and cup right now. <laughs> I have to watch. I haven't. You ask anybody at my gigs, I'm totally sober. I'm fine. Then why don't you take a real urine test? Because I, the subutex, I was afraid I couldn't stay off the subutex long enough. And, oh. uh, you know, every once in a while you might have a drink. So you're saying there was no <laughs> entertainment lawyer? <laughs> No, he well, called the, you and the said you shouldn't take a urine test? Yeah, he did call. Him. See, for once, at least I didn't get fooled about that. No, he did call yeah. the guy. Sure Four in the morning. But he, he told me the second book deal was up to one five. <laughs> Gary. That is a crazy... Does this surprise you? No, nothing surprises really? me anymore. Nothing, I mean, nothing surprises me anymore. But um, the only thing that... I, I mean, Artie is the world's best liar. That's crazy. But although I wasn't buying into it, as soon as he said he didn't want to do it, I knew that there was something up. And uh, when he got indignant about, you know, what am I going to I'm going to buy urine? But the fact that he had it on him in his pocket he was while, he's yelling, around with a bottle while he's yelling at me for saying, you know, <laughs> it's, just, it's great. I, I said he's officially the funniest person I know. That is fucking funny. Now, you obviously can't believe anything now after after. Oh, that. I still believe it before. But this is just, this is, this is, it's, I think what he just said is actually one of the funniest things I've ever You're heard. You're taking this pretty well. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Dude, so you're buying piss now? Yeah, man, it's terrible. It's one step above buying shit. Is that, is that one of the low moments in your life? <laughs> No, no, Fine no. Urine? No, the lowest moment in my life probably was, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think. Having dinner with DePace down at uh, Point Pleasant with uh, Scott and some of his kids, that was a low moment of my life. Drinking so, piss is second. Let's have a moment with Steve Langford, who's really dedicated. He's a dedicated newsman. you gotta, you got to hand it to the guy. He takes his job seriously. Impressive. Go ahead. Let's see what you got. Is Eric the Midget's next public appearance soon to be a victim of this devastating economic crisis or just a complete and total lack of interest in meeting the angry little guy? Eric's set to meet and greet his fans at a Sacramento Kings game February 27. But so far, only two tickets for Eric's appearance have been sold. And the guy who bought those two lonely tickets, we are told, 
now wants his money back. A source, <laughs> Is that true? Uh, that's what we are told. A source in a position to know now telling Howard 100 News Eric the Midget's appearance is this close to being canceled. <laughs> Eric, I thought you said 200 people were going to be going to your appearance. Well, it's, uh, Johnny hasn't bought the tickets yet. That's what the 200 to 400 tickets to be sold, they were going to be bought by Johnny. Yeah, but I mean... If Johnny buys them, what's he going to do with them? I mean, that's how you're going to... So 200 people aren't buying tickets. It's just going to be Johnny Frado bailing you out. You know, what, what do you have to say, Steve? Well, Johnny told us yesterday there is 0.0, .0 chance of him buying any tickets. To this. Really? Yes. Eric, Johnny's telling the news he's not buying any tickets. How do you get that so wrong? <laughs> I don't have it wrong. Steve said, he, he said to me that he um, would consider it. Eric, the loser. <laughs> and if the team was better than they were, are, then maybe people would go, come <laughs> see this meet and greet. Eric, the loser. <laughs> maybe if I was doing it for the Lakers, which I've asked Johnny to set that up. <clears throat> yes, Gary. Hey, if you go to Gary Page One, mm -hmm. this is a funny piece of tape. So this whole thing starts out where Eric calls Johnny Frado at like 2.30 in the morning mm. to say, hey, you got to buy up all these tickets. It's in the left hand It's a, in the left hand corner. Don't play the first one. That's just Eric going on and on. No. But Johnny calls back. It's the funniest thing because you can hear the baby screaming and wailing. Johnny's like, don't ever fucking call here at 2.30 in the morning. The second one? Yeah. Okay. Eric. How in the world do you wake me up at 2.30 in the morning? And you want me to buy 200 tickets? What are you nuts? If you call late like this again, I swear to God, I'm going to get a fucking screwdriver. And I'm going to come up there and I'm going to take you apart. Because if you don't call in the night, you fuck me up. I'm right, definitely going to get even with you now. All right. Yeah. What are you doing? The guy's a family man. You're calling him at 2.30 in the morning? And bugging him about buying your tickets. Eric, you can't be for real. I am. Why did you call him at 2.30 in the morning? There's never been a problem with it in the past. It, you know, if someone calls your house past 10 o'clock at night, they're fucking rude. 2.30 in the morning? And when you have a baby. Oh, my old. God. Well, he does. He has another baby. He has Eric the Midget. Mm -hmm. Eric, the Shut up, Mitch Arndt. You're a baby. Well, you don't no, make not, any you sense. You don't call someone's house with your needs at 2.30 in the morning. It's a babyish right. thing. It's like behaving like a baby. I mean, you're not even, it's not urgent to, to, to buy these tickets. You don't need to call them at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> Eric, that's what it you is, sound like. It is urgent. I don't want this to be... You know, another thing where no one shows up. <laughs> it's too late. Oh, my goodness. Hey, it says here, Eric the Midget's forehead looks huge today. Let me take Let a look at that. Say. Put it up on screen, guys. Whoa. Whoa. What happened? Eric, what's going on? I think combing your hair back that severe is a bad idea. Yeah, that's a lot of forehead. No one else fucking complained. Shut no, up. No one else is honest with you. That's a lot of forehead. And a lot of big blotch there, too. Big, giant, square blotch like oh, that. shut up, you damn witch. Like that, that guy who ran Russia for yeah, a while? That, uh, big wine Malo stain? Gorbachev. Gorbachev. Gorbachev, that dude. Actually, it looks like a car peeled on on his forehead. Yeah, like, like a that, tire track. Like a tire track. Kind of like just <laughs> <laughs> when he takes off. Eric, you're, you're fucked. And in the every, hair, every way. the hair color that he's dying his hair, there's no co real color like that. He must have just done that. That's a fresh. There is. That's a fresh dye job. Yeah. It's got to be. When did you dye your hair last? Last Thursday at Frederico's. Yeah. So you're getting it done by someone now. They did that at Frederico's. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> did you say to Frederico, there's no color like that? What's there it? is color like that. It's in their fucking book, jackass. Yeah, but we're talking about on humans. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, that's horse hair. That's almost clown red, actually. Right. I know a clown has hair. Like I went Emmett, Emmett Kelly red. <laughs> <laughs> I want to look like Boozo. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you told them? Did you say no, you wanted to look like Emmett Kelly? Said. <laughs> what? Did you tell me you wanted to look like Boozo? I look like Boozo. <laughs> I want to join Barnum and Bailey. No, nah, it's a little too red, Eric. Trust me, you should go a little... The way my hair color was when I was a kid. You look like Heat Miser. Yeah, but you're no kid. I'm Mr. Heat Blister. I'm Mr. Sun. Da -da -da -da. You're an adult male. Yeah, you're Mr. Badass. Shut up. I'm Mr. 101. <laughs> What's going on with your forehead there with that big red square on it? I mean, I'm, I'm concerned. Is that psoriasis? No, nothing's going on with it. Yeah, okay. You're very red and blotchy. But really, Eric, you know it's ridiculous to call Johnny to buy the tickets because that doesn't mean you're a success. It looks like you walked into a freshly painted stop sign. Why is it Johnny's responsibility yeah. to, uh, to You Eric? get yourself in these Eric, messes, and the then he's supposed to... Midget. Yeah, it's out, out. it's out in the public uh, forum here that you're asking a friend to bail you out, so it would be more embarrassing than canceling. Did, and so Johnny will have to get 200 of his friends to show up. Did you hear the guy who bought the two tickets for your appearance is, wants his money back? <laughs> I don't fucking think so. Steve, how do you know that? <laughs> An extremely good source. Hear that? Oh, whatever, you Canadian jackass. The truth hurts? <laughs> not the truth. You ain't phasing Langford. <laughs> well, Johnny's not going to buy those tickets, not after Eric wakes him up at 2.30 in the morning. I know that. Johnny's not. I don't know not. how Johnny's still friends with him. He's so abusive. Johnny's a saint. Johnny's a wonderful man, but he, I think he's at his wit's end. I don't know. Uh, it sounds like he's done that with a screwdriver before to other people. <laughs> hey, why, do, why, does, um, why does the guy who bought the two tickets want his money back? Maybe we could get to the bottom of the problem that way. Do you have any ideas, Steve? I don't have the answer on that. You uh, didn't say to him, why do you want the money back? Uh, we'll have to look into that. All right, thank you. He came to his senses? <laughs> Wouldn't he have a lot of time with Eric? I mean, if he's the only guy who shows up. It'll be a night with Eric. Yeah, I mean, he could have exclusive time with Eric, you know. And this is a guy who gets $40 for just a phone message, so it seems like it would be a good deal. And, Eric, there's nothing worse than doing an appearance where it's one or two, like, really obsessed lunatics who show up. Which, by the way, visit my store at jfsc.tv slash ETA. By the way, you should know this. At, at my uh, book signing over the weekend, someone asked me to sign a picture they bought off your website, Eric, and... He, like, drew a bunch of cocks on your face. and uh, Really? The cocks that Eric's sucking. And, oh, my God. Yeah, it, was, it was really defaming it. I don't think you're allowed to do that legally. I think for another Draw five... Draw a cock onto Eric's mouth? Yeah, like big... It wasn't good art, but it was a cock, clearly. <laughs> that doesn't sound very nice. Yeah, and it has the cock... Eric, how do you feel you? people are buying your picture and drawing cocks on your face? That's not... Cool. Right. <laughs> it looks better than the enormous red blotch on your head. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you're just absolutely enormous. Period. Mm. Actually, uh, you should sell it like that. I'd buy a picture of Eric with a big cock in his mouth. Oh, I'd pay an extra twenty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eric, maybe you ought to start drawing the cocks. Uh, thank you, Eric, and uh, appreciate the phone call. Bye bye. Bye. Good luck getting some midget pussy this weekend. I, I got to bring this up now. It happened at the end of the show, but I think it's critical. Artie and and the urine. He says Artie says that not only did he purchase urine for a upcoming drug test, if that ever happened, but he said he had a drug it. test. By the way, that he asked for. But he said that he had it on him the day it was being discussed. Where does the truth lie, Gary? Well, I know that's a tough question when it comes to Artie. I just you know I just know what I hear in the office. So I'm sitting there thinking like, what a, you know, Artie's out of his mind. This is crazy. I can't believe it. And then I hear somebody say. Who believes? How do you know that you can believe what already just said? Which I hadn't thought of. Some people think that the story he told today might not be true. Oh, that he didn't even have the urine? He was just... Just telling a great story. I'm, I'm believing he had the urine on him. But now now, now the seed of doubt has been planted. That's how low his um, his trust level is around here. Did you hear on the wrap-up show, like, Artie confessed yesterday. He admitted <laughs> that he had purchased $500 urine. Yeah. 
And I, now, was, I overpaid for it. But everyone's saying that's a completely made up story. I think so. What? I think they're nobody, right. Now, and they went back and checked the tape to see if that day if Artie really did have urine in his pocket, if there was well, any detectable a bulge. bulge or, there was a bulge. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's not, I guess your credibility is gone. I saw Gary down. wants me to be completely honest about everything from now on. Okay. Mm-hmm. Tell Gary he's going to get brutal honesty from me. Really? <laughs> okay. Ooh. 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 What does that mean? No, Gary, I heard Gary say, I mean, you know, I'm really pissed off at Gary. Well, he, he says, said, he says said, a blanket statement. He believes that cunt reporter when she goes, oh, Artie said he'd just lie to you if I didn't jog with him. You think, Gary, you think I give a fuck if your monkey ass knows if I jogged with the fucking reporter? No, no, no. Gary ga- 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 makes blanket statements like, he lies about everything. <laughs> He thinks he's so funny on that rap up show. You're not you funny. Too, you're not funny. Congratulations. You're, you're very funny. Yeah, I know I am. That's why I'm here. God knows why you're here, you fucking asswipe. Wow. Mm. <laughs> hey, don't say I'm... Don't just say I, I, I lie about everything to the Artie, fucking the world, to the four people don't that listen to that fucking me, show. Fucking All right, Gary. I'm going to be brutal honest. You, I'm, lie. you lie. Everybody lies, because if everyone didn't lie, there'd be no friends in this world. Everybody doesn't lie almost every time they speak. Okay, right. Okay, well, it's brutal honesty with Gary. You think I'm the only one here that thinks this already? Uh, no, 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 Gary. Before you before you, you say it out loud like you're some you, know-it-all. Like you're you some know-it-all on, on that Hold fucking on. show. Before you jump on me, first of all, just so you know, and I know you can give me your brutal honesty when I'm done, when I, when I do that show, <laughs> people come to me all day long to tell me things. So, in a way, like the, way the same way Well, you tell see, me who they are. Be every, honest with me. Every single person here, every person on the TV crew, every person in the office. Oh, right? well, the name names. Who's concerned about me wanted, lying? If wanted to be named, I guess they'd step up. But you know how that works around here, Artie. You know right. how that works. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to be I'm honest with you. I'm going to be... I'm you. not... No more lying for me with Gary. I'm not making stuff up about you to get on your case. This is what people come to me. You think, you think that wasn't a joke, me telling that cunt reporter that... I, I'll just lie about jogging? Are you retarded? Oh, yeah. That's the fucking that's the fucking example you used just there. He lies about everything. Play the clip, he's such a dork. He's like, Oh, he lies about everything. He he told the reporter he wouldn't jag with us. He just like, I guess I guess I mean she's a fucking mind. dumb idiot and so are you. And don't fucking make comments about my character based on me telling the reporter I'm gonna I, I'm not jogging. Wow. You always get the truth out of me. Always, eventually. Eventually. <laughs> Glad you threw that in. Well, it is Just possible. don't let a fucking... Okay, so now, from now on, it's the truth. If I'm wow. asked a question about Gary, it's wow. the truth. <laughs> always, always the truth about Gary. Always the truth about guess, Gary. Guess, 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 Gary, be... you better tell that phone screener not to let any calls through if, if I really cared if you came to Afghanistan. Oh. <laughs> On the private jet to the crafts. Guy got a lot. Guy got a lot of laughs in Afghanistan. Good to have him. <laughs> See, I thought that was so the, the book's truth. a lie, then, right? <laughs> of course it is. All the good parts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you really? I th- thought you were. I had heard you were annoyed that no, Gary went. I'm to not going to say anything. Mm. <laughs> Wait a minute! You I'll said you tell the truth. You're going to tell the truth. Well, well, I mean, like either that or I'll say nothing. You know. Oh, I see. <laughs> I don't want to start arguing with Gary. And the, stool, and, I'm a liar. And the stools are bothering you too, right? Uh, well, In his theater. I, I, I don't care. I, I don't care about the stool. You don't. That's the truth. <laughs> I don't care. And the truth is that you really didn't want Gary going to Afghanistan with you. you I'm not saying anything. You really were pissed oh, off about the, the private. No, 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 you, no. You were, I loved having honest. you there. I loved that. You, you, those old jokes Levy gave me were great. Be honest. Already beat with Mister Fucking Honesty. I don't know. <laughs> well, we you got... started it. <laughs> take the clip yesterday, Gary. You, 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 you know, you, you take it a little. Yeah, I'm sick of being a punching bag with, with you people with this liar bullshit. Gary, play the clip yesterday. I'm sick of taking that shit. You're not funny. You're not funny. Will isn't funny. John's not funny. That show is horrible. And you're funny when you lie, which is almost every. I'm funny day. all the time, which is why I should be making more than you. <laughs> I don't know that you're not, but who knows if you should? Well, I, I know, I know. I got it. I, I saw up, it. Let's not base it on uh, on how when everybody shows up at this place, because then you shouldn't be making anything. Yeah, right. Wow. wow. <laughs> how many sick days is a person allowed at this corporation? I'm sure I have plenty you're left. Allowed as many as humanly possible. All right. Well, if fine. you're in fact sick, Mister Honesty. Right. Well, we we uh, I I told you I've never been sick. <laughs> yeah, he, he was honest about that. Yeah. I believe he was truthful. 
Well, I don't like to see you boys fight wow. viciously like that. Well, pl- I, play the clip. You'll see what why I should that, be annoyed. What is, what what, what is this clip? Do you think Gary gets on, on that fucking high horse in that wrap-up show and just like, you know, he's the king over there. And he's like, uh, everybody's like sitting around the fire waiting for Gary to tell war stories. And they're always horrible. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and yeah, and then they fucking, uh, you know, it, it, they start talking about me. And Will is sitting there going, like, why is Will on the air? What credibility does he have? Will is a producer. What credibility do you have? I mean, well, I'm a performer. I, I'm in sad. Scheme in this place. <laughs> Aside from being comedian, you hired me, dickwad. I didn't. Howard did. Well, okay. Well, fine. Said, what does that tell you? You're a funny guy, but what credibility do you have to be on? The I don't need any other credibility except that I'm funny. You were an intern. I wasn't an intern already. Well, I don't know. I remember Boy Gary when I started listening. I got paid to fucking be here, douchebag. Oh, all right. Well, well it's gotten wow. very ugly. Wow. It's we bad. all knew this day was coming. Artie will eventually turn on everyone here. Right. Including what? you, Howard. No. Well, I'm telling you, Artie will fucking wheel around, and he'll give you this rap one day as well. Well, uh, yeah. Do you deny that? Maybe I'll deserve it. Do you deny that? Well, I can't wait. I'm preparing it every day. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, you don't know. Maybe, uh, hey, but listen, if, if Artie thinks I've wronged him, he has carte blanche to uh, certainly let me know. Same with anyone on this show, as you have many times. That's what makes it interesting. But obviously, uh, you guys have a beef. We'll sit, we'll sit there going, well, Gary, oh, we don't know what Lardy's uh, uh, lying about. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then Gary goes, well, he lies about everything. Yeah. Hey, he lies about everything. This is the way everyone here feels about you. <laughs> he lies about everything. And if anybody had any balls, they'd all come in and tell you. Let's, let's line them up. Line them up. <laughs> come on, Eagles fan. Although I got to admit, Gary got me thinking maybe the urine story isn't true. I know, you know, if they keep talking without anybody there to rebut them, it, you'll get, they'll, they'll make you believe. I mean, the only person there to rebut them is, you know, Will. Is that a ridiculous? Is it ridiculous to think that that's a funny line? It might be a funny joke for you to tell that you brought in urine and then it's fake. I mean, is it that ridiculous that I you fucking lie about stuff? Uh, uh, why would point, I lie about that? Why, why would I? Why come do you in think it's say- so personal that people think you lie? At this point, why would people not what? think Qu- that you tell the truth? Just calling me, I'm a liar. I shouldn't take you that fucking personal. You lie about everything, Artie. I right? do not. Oh my god, dude. Well, give me I some lie examples. about everything. Well, I give you some examples. How about yeah. every time he says I wasn't on heroin? I didn't take it. Every that, every time dude, it's bullshit. That's that's self preservation type lie. That's like anyone would lie about that. Have you ever lied to a boss? Of course, before? I've lied before. Okay, so what the fuck are you talking so I'm about? I'm saying it's a funny line. It's a funny line to say I brought urine in. I had a, I paid a. That's a drink. funny line. Yeah, I think it's but funny. It's a good it, story. It is. It's interesting. I, so I decided to you tell it. So I cr- that's that why I crowbarred it into the news at 10:45. I, I don't know. It's still funny, and I don't think it's that ridiculous that people think you might make it up. No, well, quite, right, your fucking right, track right. record isn't that great. Uh, right, my track record isn't that great. Huh? I, and call me a douchebag intern or whatever. I'm not funny. I don't give I a fuck. I didn't call whatever. you an intern. Yes, I don't give a I shit. I called you not funny. It doesn't matter to me what you think of me, to be honest with you. Well, it doesn't fucking, matter to me what you think of me, you dick you're, you're, you're a miserable fuck, so. Okay. Right, I'm not making it that. And I love you, Artie, well, and I do love you. <laughs> well, what? Is that? Why you love me, I'm a miserable fuck? Dude, you're the one back there. You're the miserable fuck. Call me a fag or whatever. Hopefully you punch me. I didn't call you a fag. What did I call you a fag? Did you call me all kinds of names back there? So I'm gonna. No, I, I never myself. said fat. That's gonna in your own like, head. And I wasn't. Right. I, wait, wait, hold on. I'm not that worked up. I'm just saying. I, it wasn't malicious <laughs> when I said that. Okay. I thought you were lying yesterday. I thought it might be. It wasn't funny. malicious when you called me a liar. <laughs> Dude, about that, like, why am I on living? No, why would I Will, fucking I think, make up that I bought this? I think what Will is saying is. What is Will saying? I think, now, right? I, I'm getting it now. Now I understand what Will is saying. Okay, thanks. Will Tom. is saying, <laughs> listen. Even in your book, you write about all the times that you lied. Yeah, when it concerned drugs. This is another drug story. Right, okay. So the fact of the matter is the well, guys What are saying, benefit would I get out true. of this? A couple of laughs? But listen, what benefit would you get out of asking me to what give you a drug test? What benefit do I get out of No the, one knows. This what drug benefit thing do is, I get uh, out of saying I bought piss? I don't know. I mean, it's funny. Right, you don't know. It's a great story. Oh, so it maybe is. it's just a, a, a great story that's okay. part of the Artie persona. Well, well you know. another winner. <laughs> yeah. Another radio award Dude, for a my, great honestly, story. I won't bring your name. I, I bet I could beat, I bet I I beat Maria Molito for Funniest Minute with that one. <laughs> def- I thought it was great. I think you could. I I don't, don't, I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm putting the made-up buying piss story against anything Maria Molito <laughs> does this year. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, uh, Artie uh, and Gary having words with Will. and uh, yeah, just, so, just so we know, seriously, 
Marty, I know you could care less. You are literally dead to me in terms of the wrap-up show. And, Jen, and in Good. general, too. We'll what are you going to talk about, then? We'll talk to each other, and I'll deal with you here as best as I have to. What are you going to talk I about, booking never, people? We don't have to mention you, because you know what? I, like most of the audience, is bored with it. Okay. Right. Fine. Jen, don't fucking talk to me. Send your fucking minion Teddy or whatever the fuck. If you need something, don't fucking deal with me. Don't talk to me. Okay. Don't fucking call me again. You got it. Who should I call when I lie about being sick? Well, oh, Gary. I'm only six months ahead of the real thing. Gary, let me ask you, why are you so worked up? Really? Because, you know what, this is the real Artie. I want the, this is who Artie really is. No, well, you want He's me to tell the truth. But Artie's upset I, that... I love that, that he picks this to be mad about. But wait a second. Artie's allowed to be mad that you said he lied. I'm allowed to be mad back. All right. He, he fucking took shots at me, so I'm allowed to be mad back. Listen... Okay, so why are you why are you not dead to me, guy? Whatever relationship Artie and I had evaporated a long time ago anyway. Why is been, that? Been, why is that? Been nice to each why other is that, guy? Because I just don't trust you anymore. Okay. <laughs> how am I how am I, I don't I don't understand how I ruined Gary's trust. We don't, we don't I really have don't. any relationship really. Well what do you want us uh, to do, Gary? Really you wanna go, you wanna go get a beer? We, we have very have different have lives. We have anything in common. We have different lives, Gary. I mean, you know, of course we're, how are we gonna hang out besides the show? And you, and you clearly don't really like me anymore. So no, I didn't like what you said yesterday and I got and very you, pissed off about it. I don't think and I don't I thought for a long time you don't like me. Artie is saying he doesn't no, like what I, you No, I hated said. what you said yesterday. I, I don't I not dislike you. Well, why do you, wh how is that because my it's problem? Just, it's not why? Your, why do you think that? I, Artie, it's not your problem. I didn't say it's your problem. I got it under control. I know how to handle it. Okay. And, you know, like, listen, when it comes to work, you know, we'll work. I would never, I would never do anything to jeopardize anything that goes on the show. But for you and I not to talk to each other is not going to change our relationship all that much. All right. Well, who do I call when I lie about being sick? Call me. I'll, I'll accept your lies. Okay, Gary. Because that's work-related. And it'll hurt you again. It'll betray you again. Gary crying on his way to work. <laughs> well, you know, Artie's I, lying again. I think everybody spent too much time thinking about you. <laughs> okay, good. Well, let's stop then. That would be fantastic. That's all I want. It is so done, buddy. Great. I can't well, wait to hear more about how you booked uh, Richard Lewis in 1982 on the wrap-up show. <laughs> this is some beauty. <laughs> You don't like the wrap-up show. I, know, I enjoy I it very much. I I uh, apparently, he's listening. Uh, oh, I, I, do. I, listen. Listen. I love it. Artie's so talented and so funny that no, he's, I didn't he's say above, that. He's above the wrap-up show. That's 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 too low for him. He's too. He's too I go awesome in all the that. time. I go in all the time. Not really. Not anymore. You haven't really been in well, in months. Well, that's not so my contract. I go right to do heroin. As soon as I leave here now, <laughs> I have a heroin appointment at a quarter after eleven. I can't do the wrap-up show. Is that the truth or a lie? <laughs> That's a joke. You couldn't tell a fucking difference. Uh, you, I know, because I'm beneath you. No, because you're horribly unfunny. But I think you're a nice guy. And beneath you. No, you're boring and unfunny. You're not beneath me. Was he boring and unfunny in Afghanistan? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm glad Nick DiPaolo and David Tell had a few less minutes on stage. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, you just heard. Right, let's, 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 you know that joke. Let's just be a little bit honest. Nobody's time was cut into because I was there. You could have gone for fucking days if you wanted. Yeah, to, you know, you I know got that. news for you. I'm mad at you now, and you're hurt by that. But you know, listen, I, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to piss you off right now because I'm mad at you. All right, but you're so, doing it. Okay, well that's my goal. That's my goal because I, mean, I felt you, hurt you, by you, what I felt very hurt by what you're, you're like you're throwing all these casual statements out that if people are not listening all the time they're just going to hear oh, Artie lies about everything Artie's a liar that's not true that is not a true statement and it aggravated me and that could, that could hurt me in a lot of ways personally professionally and you just throw it out casually and it pissed me off so I came in here and uh, I'm defending myself. By yelling at you. Why would you bother talking to me? Why don't you just Because you're the one who fucking said it. What do you want me to do? But you could have come in and talked to me. Well, oh, it's more fun to fuck with you on the air. What did you say yesterday about about the about when I again. spilled two inches of icy, icy? <laughs> I see. That was really. I, I, I'll be brutally honest with you. That was you being like, "Fuck you, clean it up." Yeah, and that's what that, That's there. exactly what it was. was get up that's exactly what it was. I didn't. Up. I forgot about it. I didn't right, know about because, it because some fucking underling was standing there that'll take care of it. That's what you think of. You're me. not an underling to me. You clear, You make more than me. The only one standing there. Who else was going to do it? I don't know. You got to get to the wrap-up show. 
start the fact, stories. Uh, you got to uh, get to the wrap-up show by 11 to call me a liar by 11.02. I took my tissues and threw them on the floor and told, Artie, uh, to, uh, I told Gary to pick them up. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, and that's what he bullshits. Do you see? He sits in here yelling at you in the air. No, I was all kidding. Him, I picked up my own thing. <laughs> right, Gary? <Yeah. laughs> yes, you did, Howard. <laughs> What about when you made him go get your cum rag at your house? That was necessary. He volunteered. He didn't make me. Here's another one of your lies. He didn't make me. I volunteered to do it. I'm sorry. That was a lie. Any man would want to touch my cum rag. He trusted me, and I said I would go. He didn't make me do it. No, any man who you'd ask to do that for is making you do it. He didn't ask him. I didn't no. ask him. He, yeah, I know. Gary went to go, you know, do, you know, I mean, is, is there anyone else in the world you'd ask to do that for? But he didn't ask me. I know. You were just being a good producer. But he said, I got to get rid of the thing. And I said, I'll go take care of it for you. When you had lunch with Rob Burnett, did you ask him if he ever got Dave's jizz rags? I know I haven't had lunch with Rob yet. <laughs> I thought you had lunch with Rob. Hey, do you know about this? Gary, preparing. in an effort to He's prepare. preparing for the future. Oh, my God. What, what is now happening? Why don't you go to a bread line? <sighs> I'll be dead. We all know that. <laughs> I won't only be dead to but Gary. I'll be, dead to, I'll be no, actually really dead. dead. <laughs> that's what Gary said. You have six months anyway. You might as well be dead to him now. Right. That's nice for Gary to say that. <laughs> the only difference between Gary insulting me and, and me insulting him is when I do it, it's funny. And so people uh, remember it. He tells me I have six months to live. That's fantastic, Gary. Thanks. <laughs> that, you're gonna be, so you practically write it in your book. I know. How many times in your book do you say, I can't believe I live to be how, what I am now? Well, listen, dude, I don't but know. I, 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 I question my mortality because of how I've lived. I, I agree with you. I'm going to qu- tell you something. As mad as you are, Gary, I can tell, uh, you know, I know you guys have differences here and there now. But Gary is so upset about you oh. because he loves you so much. Now, yeah, you're never well, going to get that, but maybe, I'm maybe, you. Well, maybe I'm upset because Gary... Look, a lot of people said shit in that room. Yes. And uh, a lot of people make accusations. And of course, Will is right. I don't care about him. Right. But uh, <laughs> uh, Gary, I do. Of course, it hurts more with Gary. Gary Gary's a ba- major reason I'm sitting here. He's a big part of my career. And he means a lot to me. His opinion means a lot to me. At some point, Gary, I think he got in his head that for some reason I don't like him or whatever. And he projects that on me. And, and he it eats away at him. And I think Gary changed our relationship in his head. So every time Gary says something like that, like I'm a liar, I go, you know, I heard that in the car yesterday. And I'm going, God, does Gary really fucking think I'm just a blanket liar about everything? That hurts. It I does. think he thinks anything drug related is a lie. Well, listen. No, that's, he was that's saying good, everything. I mean, oh, that is what, what Artie is objecting. Yeah, right. I mean, I don't look. I'll admit to that. There's been times where I did heroin, and I said, "No, I didn't do heroin." There's been times I was pulled over speeding by a cop, and I said, "Really? Was I doing 80? <laughs> so, I mean, that's, you know what, what, that's what happens. That's life. You lie about shit. You're you're right in Gary's case, and Artie's right in his case. He's uh, so angry at Gary because it matters to him. You don't get angry about people that don't matter to you. Right. That's right. It, it hurt. It hurt me a, a lot to, to hear him say that. I don't care. You know, uh, everyone else in that room is, first of all... Is this the makeup the, phase? Because I like the arguing phase ever, better. I know. Well, I'm not ready to let go you, of that. You love that more than <laughs> anything. Well, you brought it up. See, you yeah. brought up that Gary is hurt. I mean, Artie lied about seeing a shrink for six months. I know. He I mean, that, that, was work, that was work-related. How, how is it work-related? Were we going to fire you if you didn't go? No, listen, there's people that in my... That was lazy-related because you didn't want us to break your balls, but we weren't going to fire you. Well, I'll certainly admit to being lazy, but you guys... Uh, here's a bulletin, Gary. You guys aren't the only people in my life that are affected by that. I, I didn't, you know, my mother was comforted in thinking I might have been doing that. So, like you do to your parents sometimes, yeah, you lie. But now you admit that your lies are wider than just drug-related. No, the shrink is drug-related. It all ties into, you know, if you want to call it a disease. I, I, first of all, I, I don't think it's a disease. I think it's just a bunch of assholes who want to get high. I, I, but if you, want to, <laughs> if you want to call it a disease, whatever, then, then that's part of it, the lying and all that. I mean, Dr. Drew will tell you that. Dr. Drew did tell us that. Right, of course. I mean, and it compounds and stuff, but I, I've never lied. To, have I embellished stories to make them funnier? Yeah, but that's my job. I, I didn't lie about buying piss. <laughs> <laughs> Is Artie still dead on the wrap-up show, Gary? I think that's a major discussion that you shouldn't you know give what? up. I'm uh, not going there anymore. You know, to the wrap-up just, show? No, yeah, I'm going to the wrap-up show. Oh, right shit. But there's, 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 uh, listen, I'm at the point now where Artie 
is mad at almost everything I say in the rapper no, show. No, no, Robin, that's not, Robin, that's a lie. How is I, how am I mad at everything you say in the rapper? Mad at, and Artie's, you know, I'm not honestly, mad at you. I think it's funny. And Artie's quite honestly bored to tears by me. Oh, but geez. listen, now I don't know what I can and can't say about I like when you discuss show. Artie. I think you should continue to do I like when you discuss me. It fascinates yeah. me. I don't know what I can and can't say about Artie anymore. Clearly you can say everything. Say whatever you want. Gar- how am I your boss? You, I'm not telling you what to do. He's just telling you he didn't like it. Right. The show's working. You want me to not? Yeah, I'm reacting to it. You're like the Rush Limbaugh of Artie. Like, in other words, you say stuff and it provokes. Right. It's a provocative show. You've gotten a response. It means it's not boring. Artie's your Democratic Party. You right. know what's so crazy about Gary, too? He's in this cloud about my opinion with the Afghanistan shit. We were over there for a week. Right. He knows He knows how much fun we had together. He knows it was good. He was there, and he still doubts it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like... Like, I, I doubt I, it because uh, I wasn't there. Right. I mean, of course. Hold on. Hold on. You didn't take a shot at whether we had fun or not. You took a shot about whether you wanted me there. Whether we had fun or not, is it the... Is Gar, it the, listen, I came in here today knowing that you're so insanely sensitive about that, and I was pissed off at what you said, so clearly I'm, tr- I'm trying to make you mad. <laughs> so you know what? Here's the really fucked up thing. This is what it all comes down to. I, I don't know whether to believe you right now. I swear to God, I don't know. What I don't. I don't know what. I, I don't know what the truth is. Did you really like having? I think he liked having you in Afghanistan. But I, don't know I when think. Artie so. sees that he upset me so much right, that, he that feels now bad. he's reeling it in, and I don't know. Listen, man. This, listen, I don't man. Know uh, the truth of the lie is anymore. No, no, no. I, I, I yeah, I did upset you. Mission accomplished. The way, did you mean the way, it? Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, listen, man. Did you mean it, Artie? If you, if you Art, can't tell whether Artie. or not... Wait, wait. If you can't tell whether or not uh, I wanted you there by by our experience there together, then that's fucked up. I mean, maybe you thinking... didn't want him there, and it turned out better than you thought. Right. That's the whole point. Wait, I don't doubt that we had a good time there, but I'm still not sure that you wanted me there. Okay. Right. Well, did you want him there? Y- y- yes. <laughs> yes. I don't think that's honest. Oh, boy. <laughs> I got to go with Gary on. on this one. Come on, be the brutally honest guy. You said you were going to be brutally honest. Be brutally honest. You did not want Gary in Afghanistan. I'll tell you what. All it's right. fucked up because we were just arguing and yelling, but I, I did want him to come. I, I believe you'd be truthful. <laughs> I don't know. He's I don't he's know. being deceptive. <laughs> Do you want to take a lie to take the test on that question alone? I'll take it. You will. Sure. You will take that. I just Because I just want Ed Tory in here for any reason. Right, me too. <laughs> Do you want Artie to... Uh, nothing drug-related this night. Just one question. Did you want Gary in Afghanistan? Well, if it, I would I would certainly take that uh, lie detector test, but... You know, again, uh, that fucking detector test isn't credible. It said Ralph is gay. <laughs> Ed is one of the top guys in the country. What are you talking about? Any lied, not just Ed. Right. Ed you're, saying, you're, you're just saying the... Uh, in general. In general, the test. You don't buy it. Yeah. Do you want him to take the test, Gary? No. I just want him to tell the truth. I don't need a test. It just, Artie, tell the truth now, and then I'll accept it. Well, Artie says this is the new truthful Artie about you, so here it comes. I'm going to ask him one last time. Okay. Artie, uh, in, in light of the fact that you are the new truthful Artie, <laughs> and you're going to talk the truth, because Gary told the truth. He feels you lie about everything. Everything, Every right. Every fucking thing in your life is a lie. See, this is good with that. All right, so it. now. If you said yeah. this was Thursday, you'd wow. be lying. Right. We don't even know if you know what day it is. So here's the thing. Artie. It's, it's the last day before we have a day off. Did you want <laughs> did you want Gary in Afghanistan? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? He gave me this smile, too, before he said it. No, I did. I you know, looked at Gary, and you, see, you looked at Gary, and you felt bad for him. You're looking at that TV screen. No, no, no that's not true. Yeah. That's not, I mean, you feel bad for him. He does have a Bob Cratchit look there. I believe Artie did not want. I believe Artie is lying now and does not well, want. Well, that's, that's what you're saying. Yeah. I think Artie had a different idea in mind when he was crafting the whole thing. Crafting. <laughs> <laughs> He's a mastermind. Artie's and idea then, was to go to somehow score pure heroin. In no, that I, when I was crafting <laughs> Operation Mirth. <laughs> And he had a whole scenario of what, who he was going to invite and, and certain people he needed for various aspects of being Artie. And then Gary said, I'd like to go. And uh, Artie, you know, well, had to change his plan. I didn't. I had someone else in mind who was yeah. a friend of mine. I didn't, I, I didn't ask Gary the same reason I didn't ask a guy like Fitzsimmons or even Levy. They have kids, and I just try. Mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I said... No to kids, but Gary was aggressive and he brought it up. So I'll say that I did have a friend of mine to come. Right. 
But when Gary wanted to come, that took up the other seat. And look, uh, Gary Gary is a guy known from the show. Anybody who's a fan of the show would love to see Gary. So, uh, well, there you go. So, you know. <laughs> the friend wasn't going to perform, correct? No, he was That's important. To the, in other words, I didn't take up a performer's spot. Right. He, no, he wasn't performing. No. But let's face it, your friend would have been a lot more fun than Gary. Right. I, quite frankly, my friend might have w- w- got lost in the poppy field. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Artie's friend was going to do there. Artie was sleeping most of the trip. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's not a lie. <laughs> Uh, you know, so so. How about the crafts? in the beginning? How about when the owner of the New England Patriots? Right. I want I want the truth now. Okay, you. I'll give you the truth right. on all this stuff. When the the crafts, yeah, that's the craft family. They hired you to do the birthday, and then all of a sudden, Gary somehow glommed on. Well, I'll be dead honest with you here. I was I was actually thrilled he came because it was someone to talk to the make small talk with them. Right. I didn't know them that well. Right. So you so, liked when Gary no, was the guy was I, that's something I would have asked him to do. Can yeah. I tell you why I decided to go? Are they sort of asked, What are you doing in here? Well, because I, I think at this point I'm I'm pretty sure he's not going to throw anything at me. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um <laughs> it, it's it, with the crafts, I knew them before they had asked Artie. And in fact, they had contacted me about Artie going. Yeah. So on a weird level, I felt the responsibility to make sure everything went right, not only for Artie's sake, but for their sake as well. Do you know what right, I mean? Yeah. They were t- like I wanted, like Artie wasn't bringing anybody but his cousins. And, I, I thought and you a- know Artie lies about everything, so he no, might not have shown no. up. No, but no, no, it wasn't that. I just knew that. <laughs> I didn't know that. No, no, I, know I, I knew Artie didn't. didn't. I knew Artie didn't know them. <laughs> right. I knew that he was there to perform, but that it was going to be a private party. I was very. And helpful. I wanted. I just, but, but right. I did it as much for the crafts as I did it for Artie, and then uh, absolutely a part of it I did for myself. I wanted to see what was going on up there. It, it was, was an interesting, uh, you know. I mean, it was a private chat back and forth. It was fun, but I, I would have been. Uh, in a bit of a disarray without Gary there because I, I, I don't like making small talk with people right. who I barely know. Like, was there anybody you had to kick off the well, plane this time? Because no, there was Gary? plenty of room. No, that was sounds like you two, you two are back to being buddies. The worst thing I did on the worst thing I did on that trip was that wow, really, we've gone full circle here. Is wor- Artie the, alive again to Gary? I don't know. Well, uh, he's, he's got a heartbeat. The worst thing I did on that trip to Artie was Jesus. Artie's uncle and I watched American Idol on the plane. He looked at us like we were a couple of homos. Oh, and uncle, Artie was like disgusted. Yeah. Mm. Me and my uncle Tommy at least. Didn't watch it, but uh, look, look. All right, this might have been the quickest argument makeup in the history of the show. <laughs> all right, well, there you go. You guys had a lot of bad words. I just can't you. believe that. Uh, obviously, look, that's a sensitive subject. The Gary, the Afghanistan thing. I can't believe that whatever got in his head with that doubt is so there that we were fucking over there. Like I can't hide disdain for somebody for a week. I forgot. Not in Afghanistan. I forgot no, no, but I didn't think you had disdain. You're missing the point. I didn't think you had disdain. If I for resented me. you for any reason for coming and taking a, a, a friend's. Uh, spot, believe me, uh, it would have come out when I was on the 15 Valium in Kyrgyzstan Airport. <laughs> it sort of did at one point. It did? Well, no, Artie no. got really mad at me at one point during the trip, and it was just, it got really ugly. That no, was that, all, that, that, that was airport. very hurtful to me, too. Was well, what, what, when was that? Oh, right. on the Valium? Or after the I was on, on the forty value. After the night, <laughs> after the night. You see, no, don't exa- it was fifteen oh, value. Oh, it was fifteen. Oh, it was only fifteen. Uh, and what no, else? it was fifty value. Eight Airbnb and three shots of wild turkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God in heaven! What are we gonna what do? By the way, dude, dude, I was that in. I was kill in, an elephant. Oh I was in Kyrgyzstan. Oh my God! God. All right. How it's do you easy. handle it's that? It's easy really? not to drink in uh, Ibiza, wherever you guys go. How many? Ibiza. How many <laughs> drugs can you take? A lot. He has a tremendous constitution. Listen, Sheesh. the late John Belushi and Chris Farley had tremendous constitutions. Wow. Everyone always says that. They were dead at 33. That's right. You've outlived them all. That's You're right. a better drug taker than they are. He has more tolerance. What did you used to say years ago when I used to listen to you? What you used to say, uh, <laughs> Keith Richards is the best white Greatest drug. white drug taker ever. <laughs> well, the guy is. I look mean, at him. First he's of all, alive. He's even still the, alive. I mean, even he looks the, like Dracula. <laughs> even the cigarette smoking. I mean, this guy smokes constantly. On stage. Though. On stage. He can't even put down a cigarette. And when he's in the middle of a guitar solo, he's got one burning. <laughs> right. in the... He's got the, gu- the cigarette in the guitar. Him and Ron Wood both. Yeah, and the guy's, you know. Thin and looks good, you know, for a guy who's done that much. So I mean, but, crazy, he ran up a tree and almost killed. Right. Him. Anything I said on that shit, you can't believe. I mean, of course, it was. It was. I, I, you know, again, part of me was like, I wondered if it was truth serum. What did he say? <laughs> well, let, let me tell you what happened. Yeah, I, 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 I don't even remember. Yeah. I never had this out, and, and, and as long as we're having it out, I want Artie to know because I, I don't know if you, I don't know what he remembers and what he doesn't. So, the whole <laughs> temper tantrum in the airport, you know, I'm there also videoing everything. Right. And at, a couple of times I went to pull the camera out, I go, you know what, man, this just, it, it, I wanted to, but he was in such a state that I felt if he saw the camera, he'd smash it. 
Right. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> he was really, he was frantic and, and right. wanted to, he wanted to he be wanted out to of Russia. He wanted to get out of there, yeah. And, and you know what? <laughs> we were all right behind him. Nobody's going to deny We were all like, let's just get the fuck out of here. We were handling it much more professionally. Right. <laughs> I, was trying I, mean, to pay, I, I was trying to pay, what, $18,000 yeah. for a the, flight. Howard, the worst part of it was we walked right by the plane we were supposed to be on. Right. Like, we were on the tarmac, and, and we go, oh, there's our plane. They go... Yeah, you can't get on that one. <laughs> We're like, when's the next plane? They're like, oh, I think 36 hours. We're like, fuck! You know? And this is after 20 hours of wait, playing cards you... and killing time at Bagram in Afghanistan while we watched but toilet why... paper get loaded. But why couldn't you get on your flight? Because it was already, like it was the doors were shot. But I don't understand. Were you late? Yes. We barely made it. Like we were. But so... that wasn't our fault. Oh. A conne- a, a, it wasn't our fault for being late. We were so long at one airport, the connecting flight, you know, we just so missed. it's the airline's fault. Oh, ab- yeah. oh absolutely. Well, no, it was the, ar- the Army's but fault. But a military flight. Right. You can't yell at them. Right. right. It's like, look, you're fucked. All right. So, so, yeah. so now Artie's in the airport. Artie's very upset. And he takes, you know, he gets the pills and he gets drunk and he's throwing things. He's pissed. And like I said, we're all pissed too. I'm not giving him any shit about that. So we end up going back to the to the base, and we go back. <laughs> but to the you barracks. didn't throw things and stuff. No, no. But so now Artie's no, really, I, I did. Artie's really, he's fucked up beyond belief. Right. I mean, he's really, really out of it. He goes back to his room, and he sits down, and I come in with a camera, and I say, Artie, you know, what do you want to say? And I know that he's fucked up, and I, but but this is so important to the story. I know that I would never in a million years use this piece of tape. But why tape it without then? showing because. Because it's a moment that's getting lost. You plus, were it's, plus, it's but isn't one it of great those to just have that moment lost? Guys? Yeah, but isn't it one of those moments that will become legendary? No, 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 and, no, 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 no. no. I, I think see, at this, point, this is where I argue. Music. I think a true friend does not tape that. No, no but I would have never, ever, but wait ever. Wait a second. It could, be, it could be just the other way. Like you know, you, you throw in the thing at Teddy was terrible, but then it became. I don't. I can't. I can't. No, but Howard, I can't. I Remember? can't watch that. Right. I cringe looking I at it. I cringe looking at it, too. I, uh, yeah, but okay. But it could be the thing that makes you snap out of whatever it is you're in that you won't make I the think right I, decision I think for. I could figure that it looked pretty Yeah, but at the same point. Without, without the video. When you work Sometimes on this show. And you guys were nice enough not to air that for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> well, you told me to air it. Yeah, right. Okay, clearly I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> we, called Artie. we called Artie. We called Artie. I said, Artie, I'm not going to air it. He's in a straitjacket, and he said, air it. You called me and told me to air it. Our decision decision was not to air it, Artie. Why yeah. did you overrule it? Yeah, right. We didn't air oh, it. Yeah, right. That's the truth. Well, why would you listen to anything I said? Because I believe you. <laughs> at least then I did. Right. Can I finish? I want to finish the story because it's important. It's yeah. important for me to get it out. So now Artie and I are in this little tiny dorm room together. Okay. And uh, I start taping it. Artie goes, shut that fucking thing off. He goes, I know exactly what you're up to. I know how you are. I know what the fuck you're thinking. And, and I'm like, okay, I get it. I got it. I got right, all that. Right, right. Well, wouldn't you think I, that? If I, if you're like on Hold the on. ground throwing up and I'm got a camera. Yeah, I didn't need anything but you know I could always erase that. I could never go back and get Why it. Why would you even take it? Because it's just the thought of Because you might have wanted it. Oh, yeah. All right. All right, so we great. Great. Oh, no. I might have wanted it. Let's move ahead. So God, I shut that camera off immediately. in a different world. He's very upset. He's very agitated. You should never have turned the camera off. I shut off. the camera off. <laughs> That's my problem. And, with and then Artie, I thought, fell asleep. And I have to tell you, it was me and David Tell and Nick DiPaolo, Jim Florentine. It's like 5 in the morning now. It's light out. We all tell Artie we're going to bed. This is, we're like in fifth grade. So that Artie thinks that we're all going to our rooms, and then we agree that we're going to meet out in five minutes to go get breakfast. But we don't, want Artie to know, we don't want Artie to know we're out. So we're standing out in front of the... Of the um, the, the barracks, <laughs> and we're and we're all having this conversation like, oh my god, Artie's so fucked up. We're just sort of like, you know, decompressing and everything. And all of a sudden, Tell goes, oh shit, there he is. He's out. So Artie was out. It was like, fuck. And that's when like Artie, in front, that's he got out. in front of everybody, and I don't know what Artie remembers and what he doesn't, but in front of the, this group of guys, Artie came right at me physically, yeah. you know, and he's like, you motherfucker, I know you, more of the same, you fucking cocksucker, you piece of shit, and just started calling me the wow. worst names you can wow, imagine. Wow, wow, And then the next morning, or, well, the next afternoon, <laughs> I slept right up in half. half. Already got up, and when he saw me, he goes, yeah, you know, by the way, last night, I was a lot of, out of line. All right, let's go get some breakfast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that was, well, I, I was forgot. Like, I don't remember I was all terrified, that. Howard. I was, I was, and I wasn't sure what Artie remembered and what he didn't. Well, so, like, there's a part of me that I've always thought, does Artie know what he said to me? 
And I don't that, remember. Was that just a simple apology, or does Artie not remember any of it? But I will tell you, I, Howard, did I talk to you about this in the summer, how hurtful it was to me? Yeah. I, I, don't, really remember de- I don't remember details about what I said, but I mean, you know, shit. Yeah, Gary I, was on the phone with me. for. <laughs> I, I knew all about this, like for, like Gary was on the phone with me for days about it. It hurt. It just really it, said, it, Well, I mean, but, I don't know. You could have called me and said it, you know. But I didn't know. I didn't. I couldn't even figure. I, I almost didn't want to call you because if I did, yeah. I didn't want to remind you of what you might not have remembered. Well, but you see, now you know something that I don't I don't really know all of that's festering, which is why you might be aggravated too, or might think that way about me. I don't know. About well, it's also again since it happened there, it's a part that right, makes me wonder: right, right. Did, you, did already want me there? No, I. I mean, in that state, I was mad. Someone was filming me. You know, I mean. No, I get it. And that makes me question someone's friendship if they're filming me while I'm, you know, practically throwing I'm up. I'm questioning whether he's fight. a good producer. He stopped filming. Well, there's that. But well, there, well, there's that too. To me, I'm like, okay, what's the fuck he? Is he over there? If he ain't filming that great moment, it's but like, it wasn't your video he was shooting, was it? Well, it was for, it was for like the TV show. You start yeah. thinking if I'm gonna jump off, oh. a, if I'm gonna jump off a cliff, does he talk you. me off the cliff no. or does he videotape me he's jumping? He's a documentarian. He's a documentarian. <laughs> he can't help you with a cliff. Once you're going over that cliff, you're that's there. That's getting. That's making the news. I'm not recording you, it. I'll and tell then, you one thing though. What do you want to jump off a cliff and not have a memory of it? I'll tell you one thing that um, be great for my kids to see. Here's your. You're not having kids. I I want I want to have an illegitimate kid. I decided oh, like the you Jerry Lewis Eberhard. thing. Yeah, oh. you know, and then but I'll take care of it. Angie so, Everhart announced yesterday she is having a child. And doing a reality Artie's show. Child. It could yeah, be Artie's right. child. So anyway, listen, if it was but, Artie's baby, it'd be fantastic. Here's the funny thing about about that whole thing. As fucked up as I was, the army guy that was with us, the Vietnam guy, Jeff Anthony. You know, uh, this fucking you know black guy who could do like a million push-ups and sit-ups right. and strong guy. And he just knows everything about the military, and he's just been there, done that. He was tolerant of a lot of our bullshit behavior, okay? Right. But, and he tolerated a lot of bullshit from me. Right. But the one thing I remember in that man is he he had had enough of me. Okay. <laughs> that, that's, so, so back at the barracks, yeah. already wandering around. Right. I'm wandering right. around. A high as a kite. Clearly fucked up. Which they were, that was their biggest fear in getting Artie over there. He, right. turned, he, he really did right. tell yeah. them that yeah. he was fine. Jeff he turned did. to us, Jeff turned to us, and he goes, you fucking guys got to figure this out. Yeah. And no. like, figure what, you saw what we're doing. Right. So he, I guess at one point he just got, you know, it's like you know, the, the, the Marine in him. Yeah. <laughs> These guys aren't going to figure it out. This asshole, junkie, hippie fucking <laughs> comedian. <laughs> so he, he went over to me, and this I do remember, and he grabbed me by the shoulder. Now, I only knew this guy to be a friendly guy right. the whole time. He grabbed me, and he got me in, like, a mini headlock. And, and he looked at me. You make friends wherever you go. he looked at me, and he said, listen, motherfucker, this is an army base, okay? You get the fuck inside and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> And you listened, right? And I went right as I marched. Yeah, you see, that's what you need. <laughs> you need to Gary, join the army. He's not oh. yelling at that guy. Right. I said, if that guy, if this 58-year-old guy beats the shit out of me right now. <laughs> I mean, Did he see the tirade against Gary? Yeah. No, I'm sure, well, no he didn't. Oh, he wasn't there? He didn't. It was, just, uh, it was, it was Dave and Jim Florentine and Nick. And, uh... Meanwhile, me and Attel had just talked for, for, for years. Me and Attel have always talked about how we want to get off booze and, and all sorts of drugs and everything in the road and... And Atel, Atel, I think has still been sober for almost yeah. a year. I think you cured him, which yeah. is fantastic. But, but he doesn't want to drink again. He said that. <laughs> he had been sober for four four months at that time. But right. the only thing with Dave is he smokes. I'm going to say five pack cigarettes a day. I know. He can't get rid of that. But he also doesn't sleep much either. Uh, no, he's a vampire. <laughs> yeah, he is, and he's always been. That's why he's such a great comedian. He, I mean, like on a, on Easter Sunday, <laughs> on on Christmas Day, Atel had five spots at the comedy cell. Wow. wow, that's why he's, that's why he's so great. I'm sure. How do you know talent and doing it. We like, landed from this fucking 87-hour trip in Afghanistan. We land, land at 5 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, and Dave gets out, he gets himself out. I go, who are you calling? He goes, I want to see if I can get a spot at the, at the, the you know, comedy store. You tonight. know what? They, here's a great day. Wow. Like, that didn't work the that day, night. The day you landed. We landed at 5. He, I think he went on at midnight. Here's oh, why okay. he might be the greatest com- comic, I think, of my generation, like club comics, and why he deserves it is what... Like, in the beginning of the week, they they call it calling in your avails, yeah. your availabilities to a club. Like, on a Monday, you call up uh, the manager to Stand Up New York or a comic strip or a seller, and you go, listen, I'm available Monday through Wednesday. And they go, all right, you got a 9 o'clock Wednesday, 9 to 9.20, you know, right. and they give you your spots for the week, and that's, you know, you go. <clears throat> so, well, we're, we're still in Afghanistan. We're in Kandahar, and, and Jim Florentine has a special cell phone that we can only use some of the time. We had just been bombed. There was a bombing that made the papers. We're all calling up our family and going, I'm okay, we're okay. And then I, I hand the phone to Attell, and in the back I hear Attell go, 
The name of the woman who runs the comedy cellar is Esty. Uh -huh. Because Esty, listen, I'll be back Monday. I got Monday through Friday. Wow. <laughs> oh my God, that's what he's using. The that's a real professional. Called that's in his avails. Uh, I like that guy. Yeah. See, that's, that's why I always admired him. All right, boys. It seems as if the fun part of this argument oh. is over. Now it's the makeup part, and I could skip all that. They can yeah. do that off the air. Yeah. Go, go make love to each other off the air. Uh, you know, all right. uh, whatever. All right. That was a good argument, though. I well, thought... Artie was dead for a little while. Mm. That was great when Artie was dead. <laughs> Artie didn't like that. He didn't like being dead. They, they made up. He came back. A couple of knockout punches from both yeah. sides. Did you see a white light, Artie, before you came back? <laughs> you know what that was like? That was Hagler Hearns. It was only it three was rounds. With a lot of blood. It went fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure everyone enjoyed that, though. The, but, do you ever the the, the Hagler Hearns fight? I, I have that on DVD. The end of the first round, Hagler's face is bleeding, and he looks at Tommy Hearns with a look of like such death. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then he fucking knocked him out. Yeah, Tommy Hearns. That was all going down when I was living in Detroit. The Tommy Detroit Hearns. Tommy bomber. Hearns mania. Yeah, yeah. That's good stuff. All right, thanks for that that nice fight, you guys. Good yeah. job. You guys can uh, go home now. Thanks for starting now. off the morning. Yeah. You know what? I got mad. You just killed I, a nice 45 minutes for me. <laughs> I got mad last night thinking about As soon as I heard Gary say that, I got mad, and it was festering, and I said, I'll sleep on it. And I woke up today okay, and then, you know, something triggers you, and then, you know. I yeah, I might that. even in the next hour play it again, get you all worked up so you guys can go <laughs> out of it. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. You know, I just. Uh, it was good for you. Give, yeah. a little, little, give you some time on the show. Oh, good. Yeah, because I haven't had enough air time. You need some more air time. <laughs> All right, that was fun. So, Gare. Yeah. Right, Even though fun. you guys have made up, you know, sort of did the kiss and make up. Well, first of all, I don't know that we kissed and made up. Howard said we did. We never actually did. But the conversation definitely turned a little bit more cordial than it was. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Artie claims he didn't mean any of it. And I, and I really do believe I don't know what to believe. Right. I was going to say, were there things said in you know at the beginning of that argument, and you know also a lot that's been going on the past few weeks that you can never go back to the place that you and Artie once were. Um, at the, at this second, it seems that way, but you know, it, as time goes on, everything changes. The other issue that came up was that you both care about each other so much that this is why well, your comments about each other affect. affect well, you and so it's much. true. Like Jackie used to say all the time, you, you can't. You can't give a shit about somebody you don't care about. Right. You know, if somebody says something you don't care about, I mean, like, who fucking cares what they think? So, yeah, I think of, I obviously think a lot of Artie, and hearing Artie say he th he thought a lot of me today was actually interesting because I wasn't sure that he thought that he felt that way anymore. Will that outweigh some of the comments made when the gloves came off? Like, Gary is you know horribly unfunny I and don't know. things like I, that. I, I got to process it, man. You know, I can't I can't tell you what I think this second. I I really feel. You know, like I've been in a fucking fight, and I'm just gonna, you know, get my shit together and sort of soak it all in. Right. But is there one running constant though that if Artie wasn't this screwed up with, uh, you know, the drugs and you know coming to terms with his own life, that none of this would have happened? I can't really comment on Artie anymore. Are you glad you made up with Gary? Yes, very glad. I am glad as well that I still have a feud going on with you, and we all know what a that's about. You about what? Well, about you know sexual frustration. Artie, were some things said today that you don't think, you know, that, that might have damaged the friendship, though? Like when you called them boring, uh, shockingly unfunny and horribly boring? Uh, no, I think, you know, when you're in a fight, you say things that are, uh, you know, hurtful. For instance, if I was fighting with Lisa, I would say... Uh, don't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, 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 it was a fight. When you're pissed, you start saying some things you don't mean, and, you know, it went, it went that avenue, but... If I, for instance, you say stuff that's vicious in a fight, you know, and you say stuff that you try to embarrass the person. If I was in a fight with Langford, I might bring up the matching tie and sports jacket. You don't, you don't drive. What in the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> that's startling. This is getting dressed in the dark. Jesus. Lisa, as a uh, fashion... And look who's, look, I mean... As a fashion maven, Lisa... I think he looks fine. Yeah? He's got a point. He's got a point. No, I know. I, I mean, I know Steve is a guy. He's all about the work. Yeah, but, Artie, you're, look at your shirt. It's not even covering your belly. These are $800 fucking Ralph Lauren sweatpants. No, your shirt. Yeah, so? I got what? I got a belly. I got a gut. It's called being a man. Artie, one thing... Heterosexual guys don't have abs. 
<laughs> Artie, one thing you mentioned to Gary is that you're, you're sick of him. You know, he's been paranoid for a while that you didn't really like him, and you're, you got sick of him projecting that onto you. Right. Is that something that you think you see continuing in the future? Or do you think I think now we've gotten the air out, so no, I think that won't continue. Now, have you spoken to Gary? Because I noticed in the studio you guys weren't really talking. No, we, 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 we spoke. He apologized. And I said, look, it's okay. Will. Yo. What is this signifying in, in Artie right now, where he's at? I mean, these are just... I, dude, well, I mean, everyone back here has the same fucking opinion, that Artie lies about shit. I don't, honestly don't even care. It doesn't bother me. It means nothing to me. I'm just brought it up on the wrap-up show that yesterday I thought the piss, though, the piss story could be fake because it's a funny story, and yes, Artie has a reputation about lying about stuff, but I guess that's fucking retarded or ridiculous or whatever. Why do you think he's picked now to fight back, as he Well, said. you got angry at Gary yesterday. and then But if he's going to throw my name in there, that means I have the ability to go in there and defend myself, so whatever. You mentioned during your little tirade that you still you love him. You love Artie. I you think he's a funny him. guy, and I think he's a good guy deep down, but to say that you never lie and to say it's ridiculous to accuse you of lying is come on i mean everyone around here every fan that listens to this goddamn show knows that the guy lies about shit so whatever do you think this is telling that you know this is telling that he's in a really really dark and bad place right now i don't now? know what it tells you know honestly i don't really give a shit at this point i like i said he's funny on the show and that's the bottom line so whatever all right man thanks robin pick a number between one and twelve i will pick eight that doesn't work. Seven. One and twelve? There's an eight in the one I know, yeah. I thought we had a, our phone. Our phones are really weird. All right, then pick I'll the pick. number uh, five. I'll pick the number five. All right. Uh, Vince, you're on the air. You're on line five in L.A. And uh, Vince, you're playing for $500 courtesy of TSS Radio. I assume you want to play, right? Hey, Howard. Yeah, good morning. I would love to play, except I already won 500 by, from you about two weeks ago. Oh. oh. All right. That's very honest of you. Yeah, so I, I, otherwise I would love to play. Um, but I, I call because I have a great idea. You know that um, that tape of Christian Bale swearing and Lily Tomlin swearing? Yep. You know what you do? You take the two of them and you call a marriage counselor. Yeah, the problem is and you got to get permission from the marriage counselor to air it. You see, that's the problem. Oh, I see. Yeah, so phony I phone see. calls are very difficult. Yeah, that would be a really great idea. Do we have a rule, Vince, that you can't win again? Hmm. I don't know, do you? I don't think we do, but I think it's very... You're saying you're willing to let someone else win $500. Yeah, I mean, I would love to because I could use the money, but uh, um, if you hmm. guys have, if you, if you guys don't have the rule, I would definitely love to play. Let me find out. Hey, Gary, do we have a rule? We're not sure. At Terrestrial Radio, we had a 60-day rule, which we often ignored, right. and I don't know that there's any such rule here. All right, all, I'm, I'm assuming there's no rule, and Vince can play. All right, Vince, here we go. <clears throat> okay. I mean, if there is a rule, I don't know about it. But then okay. again, I didn't know about any of the rules on terrestrial radio either. <laughs> no one seemed to inform me. All right, here we go. Brittany Stevens, the following question. How many pints are in a court? She will not know that. Yeah, I don't even know that. You here we don't? Go. No. There are two. I know, but I'm trying to have some fun. Identify? I'm trying to be part of the audience. No way she knows this. Two pints are in a court, really, Robin? Yeah. Okay. Robin says it's two. Do you think she'll know? No way. This is what Vince says. All right, here we go. One. All right. well, see. It was close. How could one pint be in a quart? All right. <laughs> that makes sense. You're on sense the board. Here we go, Vince. Question number two. <laughs> You're right. Why would you have one quart and one pint? <laughs> like you, you have to have a better guess than that. You could at least say two. <laughs> That's just lazy. There's only a one pint in a quart. <laughs> then why do they call it a quart when it's a pint? Well, it's interchangeable. <laughs> How many sides are on a triangle? Oh, I'm going to say she doesn't know it. Really? She's she got to know, know this. She didn't know. She didn't know why. Uh, Everybody knows it's five. <laughs> I mean, she's got to know that there are three sides on a triangle. Right. So, I mean, you'd have to be retarded not to know that. Well, she knew that Abraham Lincoln was her first president. Yeah. All right. So you say she will not know. Yeah. Okay. Let's find out. Who is presently the vice president? Oh, mm -mm. what happened to the wrong? answer? Uh oh, we seem to have skipped. Let me see. How many sides are on a triangle? All right. Here we go. Who is presently? Say, hey, there's no, no answer. No answer. Hey, what happened there, Sal? Uh, you guys fuck up. 
I tested it with Scott, the engineer. Every CD's tested. I don't know what happened, but can I give you the answer? Would yeah, you pick... give me the answer. She got it right. She said three. She said three. Yes. Oh. So he got it wrong. Mm. You got to trust that we're telling you the truth. I can cut you okay. later. You'll play. You'll cut the tape. All right. Okay. I'll give you proof if you don't believe us. All right. Three. Oh, there it is. Oh. Three. Now ah, it's there. That was weird. There it is. Where'd that come from? I don't know. <laughs> so strange. All right. So the answer was now, three. I tested it to make sure that they were backwards. Yeah. Oh, I see. They're backwards. Mm. So she just answered the president or the vice president yeah. question all with right. the number three. This is all screwed up, I think, because look. Who is presently the vice president of the United States? You know what? I'm just going to give you the... Now, if you go forward, you'll get it. But... All right. I'll give you the $500. I don't want to play anymore. Okay. You know great. what I mean? I'm just yeah, kidding. Yeah, yeah. You don't know what's going to happen on this. Uh, yeah. Right. South fucked up. Okay, and well, I don't know I what's going on. So I'm just going to give you $500 cash, courtesy of TSS Radio, offering excellent deal. You're dead to me, Sal, so I don't even know. <laughs> I have, every, right, I have every CD tested through Scott. All right, good job. S Scott tested it. Scott tests the CDs. He well, the, you, let me ask you something. How long have you been a fan of the show? For, 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 since I was 16 years old. Since you were 16. I'm, I'm how old do you know? Okay. I'm 39. So how many years is that? Do you know? 16 to 39, 23. Okay. Listen to me. Did I get the right 30? I don't know. <laughs> Thank God. Jesus. Right. So you've been a fan for what, 23 years, you said? Something like that? I've been a, an employee for about five. I've been all right, in all the years you've been an employee and you've listened, well, how many things has Scott gotten right? Not many. Okay. Is there always a technical screw-up when Scott's involved? 90% of the time. 99% uh, <laughs> of the time. There's, even when Scott does something that he's done a million times, like um, like work the equipment and uh, you know work the equipment for these groups, he always screws it up. So I, what the fuck is he doing We here? play the Mike Walker game. He screws, he screws it up. up. Can, why would you assume I'll tell you why. that the game would be all right if Scott did it? He's wrong. Howard, he's, he's, he's throwing Scott under the bus. I'm not. He's wrong. Mm -hmm. Every CD I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why. Scott tests the CD for the sound. Make sure that they're not clipped. He doesn't listen to every answer. Sal gives Scott the CD in the order that it should go. Sal, you're the one that made the mistake. You, you transposed I, them. No, 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 no. Scott's Scott not sitting listen, there listening to yes, everyone. Yes, he does. We listen to everyone, and we even well, do we it didn't. With, this particular case, I made the mistake, I did, of not sitting there with Scott. I go through the questions and the answers together with him. Well. Now, I put the confidence you know, in him. I, whenever I give Scott something to do, I sit there with him. Well, you this is the that. first time I didn't sit with Scott. And you well, think he would have the fucking common no, sense. No, he doesn't. Apparently he does. I mean, how stupid I, can you be? <laughs> look wow. how stupid you oh, are. My I mean, I love Scott. I mean, hi. Scott, everyone knows to sit with you when you do your work and check it, right? Sal should have. Absolutely, I'm an asshole. I mean, you know, right. I, I, you I, should I, know that. Sal. I put the cuts. I put even, the cuts in order. Scott, even Scott admits it. <laughs> no, he put the <laughs> he put all the cuts on the CD in that order. I right. didn't change the order. That's the way he gave it to. I checked it to make sure the CD I was see. working in the CD so you're player. Saying, Scott, what you're claiming is I try to listen to all the answers. That Sal questions. is the moron. Um. That would be what I'm saying. Yes. All right. How Thank can you, you listen and test a CD after hearing the vice president from a triangle question and put it through? <laughs> Apparently, you didn't test the CD. You have to listen to it to test it. No, I test it to see if each one stops after the question and stops it before the answer, and I keep going. Not necessarily paying attention to the content, but only the technical aspect of the CD. He's retarded. Yeah, he should be. You're should responsible pay. for the for the well, content. Then you both have to check it. He's yeah. responsible for the content. Sal, check Scott's work. Oh, I will. Uh, you can you. bet your sweet ass I will. Thank you. Out. Let's go. I always knew you were an asshole. <laughs> now you proved it. <laughs> wow. That's my team. <sighs> First of all, that was way better than the game. <laughs> right. Why can't Sal test the CD on his own? I don't understand. Because... I don't understand. He doesn't he's trust Howard, I don't have the equipment. Scott's the only imbecile that has the same have, CD no, player I don't. as you. No, I don't. Yes, you, you do. No, you want to bet? And we went through this because the one time I did, did it on my own, tested it through my computer, it got all fucked up, and you all ripped right. me a new asshole. Okay. So now I give it to this dope, and he Howard, can't put it together. You see, where, where are we going to go right. if you leave? You, you, <laughs> it's impossible. Uh, uh, no, that is true. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Great. I'm glad you're back. <laughs> We're in trouble. Even though it doesn't smell like an asshole, it looks like one. <laughs> How can you guys be so buddy buddy after you know trying to throw him under the bus? We were just reading the script. <laughs> hey, good job. Thank Did you. I say was I supposed to say imbecile or idiot? Uh, imbecile. I got it right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, really, you're not upset about? I am. I mean. Jesus Christ! I know you take your your bits. You have a lot of personal pride in your bits. Who put the order wrong? Who put the order wrong? What's my line? 
I put the order wrong. <laughs> Thank you. Who didn't properly what? listen to the content? You. Both of them. Excuse me. <laughs> Boss has to eat. So, Sal, you're not really... I did, because... I, I, why I did you just mess up to it? No, I Gary did. I said I didn't sit there. I made the mistake. No, but I you, but I you made gave them to him wrong, and it's not his job to listen to him for content. It's his job to listen to him for audio. It's, you, you're the one that's who creates true, it. You, you, you create the content. For all he knows, that's what you wanted. That's true. I mean, even though you know why? I always listen to it with him, because my job is the audio part. It was your fault. Yeah, really the content was. part is But it's not fault. even a little Scott's fault. It really isn't. In this particular case. All right. Scott, it's your, your job is to make sure it's the way that you put it together. That's true. And Scott's supposed to test it to make sure that it, it works. It sounds good and it sounded great. It just sounded great in the wrong order. Right. All right. Well, we're halfway there. This is the best of the wrap-up show. A recap and behind-the-scenes look with John High and Gary Delabate. The best of the wrap-up show begins now. On Thursday's wrap-up show, well, it was a very special wrap-up show. Uh, Artie came in after, on yesterday's wrap-up show, uh, Gary said he was lying. And Artie started today's Howard Stern show saying that he wasn't too fond of that. And it carried over onto the wrap-up show where Artie said he wasn't going to come again. Well, he showed up and stayed for the whole thing. And we couldn't, usually on Howard TV, we show you eight to ten minutes of the best of the wrap-up show. Well, we couldn't cut this because so much happened and it was really intense. So here it is, Artie and Gary and Will and Greg Fitzsimmons and me and Benji and everybody else who was in there talking about whether or not Artie Lang is a liar. Artie, I'm surprised to see you here. After this morning, I didn't think you'd ever be back in our I was wonderful dead. studio. I was dead to Gary. You're back. Hey, Gary, by the way, you know, I think we made up, but what a show business move to say I'm dead to you. That's like a, that's like a producer, like, Artie's dead to me. You know, that's like what Jerry Bruckheimer says to you. I, I got to be honest with you. One of his charity hockey games. I got to be honest with you. I'm not so sure we made up. I mean, uh, Howard said we made up. But um, but we didn't listen, really. We I never came, really made up. I came in here today to 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 to, to really to go tell one tenth of the audience that heard you this morning. You're sorry. Well, well, <laughs> what, what do you mean? One tenth. We don't have the listenership that you know. No, no. I, I said this today. I think I made this point today when I said that I came in there today mad and I wanted to say mean things because I was mad and I said some things I didn't mean. But how? Do, but see, you you have to seriously. How do I know you didn't meet him? That's me, man. That's, That's the tough part. Like, like you said, it's, me. it's like, you know what I'm like? I'm like David Niven in the Pink Panther. It's all a lie. <laughs> but it's just, no, it's so hard to tell. You have to pick and choose. I've lost my credibility with you and Will. And, well, and others. And, and I, I, I give Will some credit, at least, for having the balls to come in because Will, he's not the only guy that. I like No, Will. but Will's not Will, the only Will, guy that grabs my ear and says shit. He's just the only guy that had the balls to come in and. and who, the fuck, who the fuck says shit? A lot of people. <laughs> it's no, not, I'm being serious. It's he, not that, that Fruity Jason, is it? No, no, not, not for you, Jason. Who else? Not the, 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 not the black intern. Did he hear me say that thing? <laughs> no, not Black John. I thought Black John was in the... Uh, he heard me say something. But anyway, anyway uh, I didn't say anything. Uh, the Knicks didn't cover and I said something. But um, Black John, I love Black John. Any Jew uh, interns? Are you I'm, a Jew intern? What's your name, sweetie? Jessica. Jew Jessica. Uh, why, don't you call Je why don't you call her Jew Jessica if you're going to call John Black John? You said the black intern. No, you said Black John. I was joking. Do we have... Oh, oh, right. oh, how do I believe you? <laughs> how do I know when you're joking? Are there lots of white Johns? Especially since I'm not funny or a comedian. 
Well, Garrett, listen, you're not huh? a comedian. Yeah, well, I th- or funny. I thought you were Jujon. Do you think you're a funny person? No. But I, I, okay, I, I don't so think, I'm I don't with think you. but but you made it sound I think you're a good storyteller. You made it well apparently that's not even true. No, I think I yes I do. You know that. You Come just on. said oh no the, the, you were talking story about Richard you... about Richard Lewis? Uh, could do, well that was me being, you know, I'm arguing, I'm being an asshole. But how do, do you, I know? I, what do you do? How do I know when you're joking? Now, we don't we're just we're in a web of lies, as Jason <laughs> would say. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you both break each other's it's balls. John, it's a web of lies. <laughs> you both break each other's balls, but it seems like there's an underlying level of animosity between the two no, of you, and, that's and neither of you guys know where it's coming from. No, John. That's true. And I, I, it's true that there is, and it's true I don't know where it's coming from. Well, and I don't know either. Like, that's the thing. You, for months now, I have noticed a difference in our relationship because I think you believed certain things that people said that I didn't want you to come on these trips, and that's why I knew that was a sore spot and a weak spot, and that's why I sort of went at you there. I was very... Very hurt by what you said on the wrap-up show. And let me tell you something. If we replay that clip, I think I'd be justified. And if you, if a coworker and a person who's supposed to be a friend says something like that about you, a blanket statement, he lies about everything. But I didn't uh, say, you know, I, said, I said, how do we know if we could trust him? And the funny thing is, we've had, we okay, okay, know myself. Let's calm down with, with that. No, Have I ever done anything to you, like, where I, I really, really betrayed a trust to you? Like, really a bad fucking thing where, where like, I fucked you over, man. Like, you know what? Already fucked me no, over. No, on a personal yeah, level. Okay, no, well, that's what it sounds I, like, though. No, but that's I'll what t- it sounds like to people. Some, maybe some of the animosity for me comes from, I'll be up front, I have, I'm not crazy about the way you've treated the show in, say, the last eight or nine months. How have I done that? Well, but by lying about what you're up to, about like not showing up all the time. I know you, you think- No, but you, ha- listen, that's, you, your beef's with Howard, man. If Howard would pull me aside and say, stop doing that- and You not, wouldn't. Oh, I don't think you would. Okay, well, you know what? Then, w- would then, you? I mean, would you? Of course I would. Howard laughs at the whole fucking thing. He laughs when I sleep. He loves when I fall asleep because it's fascinating. All right, all right. So p- p- bring it up with him. If he, if look, if Howard Stern pulled me aside and said, "All right, listen, if you're if, if you're late five more times in the next couple of weeks, or the next, uh, 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 if you're late, and uh, I'm late twice every four months, okay, or I'm absent twice every six months." He knows it's, I, I'm in here most of the time, and it's not that big of a deal, but you get a lot of material out of it. If Howard sat me down and said, dude, if that happens again, I don't know if you could work here anymore. I would probably get my ass in here. And the fact is, if it happened again and he doesn't fire me, what kind of message did that send to me? That's, That's true. Well, That's all right, true. so, I mean, your problem's with him, Gary, not me. It is. <laughs> I think that's funny. It is. It is. Tell Howard. I, I, we're all, look, all of us are uh, are serving one guy here. Let's face that's it. That's true. Okay? I mean, that's obvious. I mean, as much as I would uh, care if I made you mad about something, ultimately my job's in jeopardy if Howard's mad about it, you know. And I think all of us know that, and we feed off of that. So it, we don't really care if we aggravate each other. I don't. Ultimately, I don't really give a fuck if you think I'm uh, hurting the show, as long as Howard No, does. I don't think you're hurting the show. That's a, that's I will never or, say okay, that. Okay, if you think I'm treating the show disrespecting badly, it, but okay, not hurting okay. it, you're not hurting it. Ultimately, if you think you're I'm, helping it on some days, why are you disrespecting I mean. it? You're helping it, which is so fucking weird. Well, that's what I mean. So it's a weird gray area we're in here. You know, if if, if ultimately if you think I'm disrespecting the show, while it hurts me that you would think that, it doesn't affect my life at all, man. Right. But if Howard thinks that and he makes that clear to me, then it affects my life. And all of us are this. Uh, if you were doing something that pissed me off, Gar, ultimately you might care because we're friends but it's not affecting your life at all that's the point i'm trying to make. right but you'd still be pissed off i would be and you know a caller made an example i didn't listen to the whole wrap-up show yesterday but uh, maybe ralph called up and called me a liar again a, a caller said that artie should be more mad at ralph than he is at will and gary and uh, here, here's the point i'm not because and this is difficult to put it i, I don't want to insult ralph in any way but ultimately I honestly don't give a fuck about what Ralph thinks. Just because, like, when this show ends, Ralph and I have the kind of relationship where I'm probably not going to be friends with Ralph after the show ends because I might aggravate him, he might aggravate me, we could be great friends one day, and then I say something that annoys him, and he'll get on the air and say the most vicious shit. And I might say something vicious about him. So it's so up and down with Ralph. I just know we're not the same type of guy. I'd wish him nothing but luck, but... Ultimately, I'm not the kind of friend on a permanent level with Ralph that I might be with you or Will. You know, uh, if I did a show, you know, if I went on to do a show somehow, I would hire you and Will in a heartbeat or be a partner with you on something. That's probably not going to happen with Ralph while I like him. So 
I don't really care if Ralph thinks I'm a liar on any level. Like, it doesn't bother me and it doesn't affect my work. You guys, it does. It affects me. That makes me mad because I think we're better friends than that. Right. And it's funny. If you would have listened to the clip yesterday, I said, got people, I, I, I know exactly what I said because I listened to it again. I said, people are saying that Artie's lying. Then I said, I believed you about the urine story. But said, and then I said, with the joggies, or I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't know when he's telling yeah, the but, truth or not. Uh, you said he lies about everything. I I don't know if I said that. He said he lies about everything. Look at like the jogging story. And for a casual listener just to hear that, they don't know what the jogging story is. They don't know what context it's in. And people are like, okay, Artie just lies about everything now. That's but, awful. But I mean, the, you know, and, uh, it's not this jogging story. <laughs> it's, the funny thing is, and maybe because you're saying it came out of me, it's not the first time. It's come up on the wrap-up show. All right, I know that, okay. th- that discussion. Yeah, but I don't know that 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 line hit me harder than than others. Well, I, I I wasn't looking to you know, and, that, and that's what's getting lost in all this. Like people aren't saying that. Oh, maybe I'm justified in being mad at that. I think I am. Right, and maybe I'm justified that you didn't come and see me, and tell me, hey Gary, what you said yesterday really pissed me hey, off. Hey Howard, I mean Gary. Okay, the same way you didn't come to me about saying, hey, when you spilled the high C, what did you say to me on the air? It's more fun to bust your balls on that's the true. air. That's true. Okay, that's so, true. I mean, geez, but I hardly put them on a fucking our... crazy world here that we're living in. This is craziness. Everybody either wants to be great on the show or be your friend. Like you know, I mean, you know, I was too uncomfortable to come to you and say that to you off the air. To be honest, well, I would just be too uncomfortable. In well, maybe I was too uncomfortable to come to you about it, and that's so why we put it on you, the air. You look pretty comfortable now. Well, we're on the air again. I know. We're back making great radio. And by the way, I said to you the whole thing about about. Um, I'm going, to, I'm going to now show you how all roads lead to Ralph. Right. I said that on the other point, the whole rap about that Gary does everything that Artie does and annoys Artie started with Ralph. I know. Right. And if it would have started with anybody but him, I probably would have brushed it off. And again, I think Ralph makes for a lot of funny things on the air and, and, and uh, he can get under people's skin. But it, it annoyed me that like that's the thing that you're really sticking with based on something Ralph said. I mean, come well, on. because because I, I I I like like clearly that got in your head and you let never let it go. But, and but, but we didn't have it out till now. Uh, but I'll tell you why because you obviously know that that's my Achilles heel. And mm. when you're fucking around, when you're not trying to piss me off, yeah. When you're fucking around, you'll go there, you'll go there, joking around, and then you'll reel it back and you reel it back in. And oh, and I'll, so I never do. If you were fighting with Achilles, where would you shoot the arrow into his uh, heel? I have a question for you, for you about the lying thing because I think worshiping it's, cock. I, I think it's important. You, you know, you've acknowledged lying about the drugs for obvious reasons. Who, who at work are you going to tell that you're using of course, drugs? John. This we, is like Hein Lang for us next. <laughs> but do you understand how? And I think Will was trying to make this point. Do you understand that if you lie about that, how that hurts your credibility about other shit? I know you say the drugs thing or, is one thing, right? That's separate. So what, name name something you think I've lied about that has something to do something that has nothing to do with drugs. I got to think about that. Of course, because there isn't much there. I mean, you know, I, I have a lot of drug addict friends who, when they're talking about drugs, you can't believe anything they say. But, you know, they're not going to, if I ask them if they're banging my wife, if they say, no, I believe them. You know, I, it doesn't, I'm ashamed of the fact that I'm a drug addict. That's awful. But I've been very open about it for years now. It's part of my life. It's part of my persona, unfortunately. And, uh. I'm afraid of losing work, and, you know, I might lie about it. That's the truth. The same way, you know, like I use today. If, you, if you're speeding, you might say to a, you know you were doing 85, but you say to the cop, God, no, no. It's like if a married guy lies about cheating, do you guys think he's a total liar then? Yeah, I mean, that's a great example. Well, I mean, do you, what do you think of Bill Clinton? I think a wife would have trouble trusting her husband again. Right. Yeah. If she knew. He said, if she, and all, and all, she knew. And all, and all her friends. Well, if he if admits friend, that he cheated. No, no, no. But if your friend, no. I think what Benji's trying to say, I think, is if you have a best friend, a right. guy that's like a brother to you, and he comes to you and says, uh, look, I'm cheating on my wife. This is bad. And then you hear him lie to his wife about it. Do you think he's a liar on every level or just because he's lying to his wife? No. I mean... You would say probably, though, that that guy, I mean, if he's lying to his wife, might be a little untrustworthy in some time, some but, ways. But if he's lying to his wife to save a life that he might have with his kids and everything, and I mean, you know. There's I mean, ga- I get that. I mean, like, I just, you know there's guys here that have cheated on their wife. Right. Okay. You know yeah, it. Benji's pretty sure he knows. No, no, okay. I mean, you know, you just know it that everyone everyone here, if it ever comes up the air, they're saying, no, I'm, I'm faithful. What, are you going with odds? I'm going with odds. Look, I've said I'm faithful. I was faithful to Dana now for years. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. But if someone lies, even if it's that, like Artie's example, 
you do think twice about them telling the truth in, in other scenarios. I mean, I was trying to think of other yeah, things because you no, asked no. that. See, I can, I can, you know, look, I think you're thinking more morally and ethically about a guy doing that. Like, it, it might make me think less of his character, but it doesn't make me think he's lying to me about everything. But, Artie, that's, did, that's, that, there's no question here, about that. Here's a big issue, too. So, you, Artie, did you do drugs? No, that's a lie. Totally, no, 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 that's a, totally that's understand. That's a blanket thing. Like, did I do drugs? I'm saying, did I do? If Howard said to me, "Are you on heroin right now?" Right, I understand. I'm going to say no. I, that I understand, but do you understand how it's? And eventually, not, I always say yes for some reason. It's not just that where some of the lies come in. It's not that black and white. Right. You know, because then it comes to other parts of your life. But I had to hide the drug thing, and it sort of permeates right. the big I parts of your life. I understand. I understand. It's not so my, obvious, uh, right? Okay. You could tie the drugs into. A lot of things that go on, like you said, the shrink. Well, you lied about the shrink because it was drug related. Yeah, it was. It was keeping my job related. That's what it was about. But, but we weren't going to fire you. Well, it, it was basically. Look, we would have been. Dis- we were disappointed. Look, how do I know that for sure? I don't know what you guys are thinking. I mean, there might be a. Why wouldn't I think you're going to fire me? Uh, I mean, you know. Then why did you tell us that you stopped going if you thought we might fire you? Because because by then, it, obviously, Howard didn't care. Uh, and I said it because, of, you know, look, I do share some things that are crazy on the air because I think they're they're provocative. Right. Like, you know? like even when you called me about the drug test, when you called me at home that night, and you said, listen, um, I, I'm not going to take this drug test. You know, an entertainment lawyer told me to take it. If I take it. I'm gonna lose the. I'm gonna lose uh, a month's worth of pay if I go to rehab. But no one ever had that discussion with you that you would lose pay to go to rehab. In fact, most of the discussion here no, was I go said, and go I, do what you need to do. I, look, I made a dumb fucking deal, and in the deal, I said to Howard without pay, and he said yes. That's where that came from. So it, it was all parameters I laid out. Don't get me wrong. When I called you, I was trying to get out of it. Right. <laughs> I but, didn't say you guys did it. I laid it out. But it I mean, was, how many times? I realized how stupid it was. How many times has Howard said, "Already go"? You know, if you want to go, go. And did he ever say, "And by the way, if you go, I'm Here's suspending the, your pay for you know off the air"? I brought it up. I brought but, up. But the I mean, pay up thing. to that point. No, he never said that. Of course right. not. But I brought it up. So that was in the rule book that I laid out, and I was trying to get that out of the rule book. That's why I brought that up. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, listen, uh, maybe maybe I, I don't want to go away for a month, too, because, uh, you know, maybe uh, some guy will sit in the chair that you guys love. Jackie lost his job, you know. I mean, maybe I'm – look, I'm – uh, Jackie quit. Uh, okay, but – and quite honestly, the, the, is, the 50 this, people that sat in the chair after him weren't as funny as you. All right. Well, listen. I, 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 how do, Sorry, they, Jimmy Kimmel. They might, they might come back. A guy might come who you never heard of and be funny, you know, and he could, could work for cheaper. This is America. I don't know, you know. Or, you know how it starts. I already could come in Monday and Tuesday. We'll have this guy Wednesday. I think about that all. I worry about losing my job like everybody else in the world. And not so much for this stuff, because Howard makes it funny, but losing my job to someone better? Yeah, of course I do. But can I be the voice of asshole morality? If you were that worried about it, wouldn't you just take care of yourself to make sure you didn't have to leave? Well, again, Gary, we're going back to why I just got into drugs. I don't know. I got addicted to drugs, man. I have no idea how that happened. Do you think you have a disease? Because you talked about that this morning, no, too. No, I've never. As you don't fact, think it's a disease? I don't. I hate that rap. I think, because uh, there's been times in my life where I've been off of drugs for four years. and I'm li- have, Then I get the blues on the road, the wah thing, and I feel like getting high. I don't think that's a disease. I think that's a, a flaw in your character. I don't think it's a disease at all. All right, since it's come up so much, we've got the clip from yesterday, so you guys can settle this once and for all. Hit it, Ted. I just know what I hear in the office, so I'm sitting there thinking, like, what, a, you know, Artie's out of his mind. This is crazy. I can't believe it. And then I hear somebody say, who believes, how do you know that you can believe what Artie just said? Which I hadn't thought of. Some people think that the story he told today might not be true. Oh, that he didn't even have the urine? He was just... Just telling a great story. I'm, well, I'm believing he had the urine on him, but now, now, now the seed of doubt has been planted. That's how low his... Um, his trust level is around here. I hadn't thought of that, but other people had. Yeah, I said that to Gary because, I mean, it's funny. It sounds funny for him to just to say, so who knows if it's the truth. And it's not to be insulting to Artie, but you can't take him at his word, obviously, at this point. So you can just speculate that anything he says is not true. Yeah, but real kind of things that he's lied about, it's always been to protect his image. It's never been like just to pull a stunt. But no, he's lied about, he, lied, he lies about everything. He, wh- how did he protect his image when he told the Rolling Stone girl he was, go- you know, that he's going to tell us he went jogging? What do we give a shit? I, if he and it is funny out? when he exactly. says he's going to take it out and slam it right. around. And that's that's a funny line. It could be. It could be. I mean, it wouldn't be. I don't think it's that big. But I don't think he. I don't think he was lying about that. So you think he had an arm? I, I I I have faith in Artie that he was lying to us about it. About the <laughs> about the urine. That he was telling the know. truth about lying about yes. having the urine. <laughs> I don't know that that that's pretty bad to me. I mean, you know, that's fucked up. But listen, you could re- you could play back a number of things I've said about people. <laughs> if you just looked at a transcript of the show, it's awful. That hurt my feelings big time. 
you I'm, know, su- I'm surprised. I mean, I didn't mean, uh, I didn't mean it. I'm surprised. I really am surprised compared to some of the things that have been said. Looking, but I'm not saying, I'm not saying everything. And, and, if right, it bothers and you, answered you, answered your own question. I don't give a fuck if you knew I jogged with the. To use that as an example is awful. No, like, it's just th- that's it, the example outside of the drug use that you use a total joke but no because it didn't it wasn't obvious it was a joke and it seemed like of anything how is that not a joke it seemed like something to not lie about i think you have a better sense of humor than this okay how is that not a joke the cunt reporter knew it was a joke she She did yes she did she said it to you to create this shit because she's a cunt you're she, acting she, like a cunt. She, no, she came here and she, I'm telling she's you. She's a cunt. But she didn't say she's it was. She's a cunt. That might be true, but she didn't say she knew it was a joke. And she she was acting like a cunt by coming in here and being a little cunt and saying, he said to me, he'll just lie if we don't jog. <laughs> Who? Cunt. Now, Will, you clearly said in there that, you know, you didn't mean anything offensive by what you were saying. Yeah, I, I don't mean to ins- no, no, insult the, no insult to Artie, but how could you take his word for anything? Oh, God, dude, that's not what I said. I said it was a funny that's exactly story. exactly what you said. And how could you be so insulted that people might think you're lying no, about but stuff? The, that's the part that's lying so about certain, Lying about certain things is fine, but you're not getting my point. Not to take my word on anything I, is, is, what I, is what pisses me off. That's a blanket statement about me as a person, not as a drug addict or a guy with a drug problem. Saying you you can't take my word about anything and that I lie about everything. No, I don't. Is, no. Is I don't. I don't say you lie about You're everything. Well, but, you just but, did. But, and you know what? I didn't mean that. What I but what okay, I do mean well, is thanks. that everything is now in question in my head. That doesn't mean you lie about everything. Well, then, 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 it means everything's then, in question. Then that's your problem, man. It, it but it's should, a problem it that's not be. that hard to have. It shouldn't be in question. It shouldn't I'm, be. And I'm not the only one. I, 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 I give Will oh, you credit. You keep saying that. You're not because the only it's true, one. Because Will's the only one. Let's talk about you. I'm talking about you. Not I'm not else. sure when you're telling the truth. That's me talking. Even, even That's it. I can't say it any other fucking way. I'm not positive when you're telling the truth anymore. I'll, I'll, I'll tell me one time outside of like drug stuff, you think I've lied to you. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look because at Because I've audience. never done it, Gar. I guess not. I'll of to- course I haven't. So when you lie for drug stuff, that's okay, and I should know the difference. Yeah, Gab, yeah, because people lie about shit that they might get in trouble about. That's human nature. People lie about shit that they think might be an awkward thing to say to somebody, because that's human nature. If everybody told the truth, everyone would hate each other's guts. This, that, that's what this show creates, you know? It's, it's good radio. But uh, you can't think of one thing, and neither can John, because it, I've never lied about anything else, ever. And that's the problem. So if, I if you were on the other side of this, and you were me, and because I know you lie when it comes to drug stuff to protect yourself, I know that. Okay. I should know the difference. For I should know that if it's if it's yeah, have not you ever possible. Lied to, have you ever lied to of, a boss? Of course, but I'm just have saying. Have you ever lied to a boss about something drug related? No, because I, I don't really I didn't really do a lot of drugs. And if I did, uh, I never worked. Where you might have been coked up all night, and someone might have said you look bad. Uh, who, who you work for? And what'd you tell them? You overslept or? I, I've never been in that position. I swear to God, okay. I, I just never Whatever. got to that. Okay, I, but, you know, but you've lied, but okay, to, but you've lied I, to your boys. Maybe you went to yeah. an Islander game too late one night. Okay, fine. Which I don't know why you were there. Another gay sport. after '83. But um, uh, you know, so that's it, guys. So you lied once or twice or three times to your boss. How do I know when you're telling the truth? It's called using your discretion. It's why you have a fucking brain. It's using your reason. Okay, Artie's. You know, he he does heroin. You may lie about it, but he's not lying about this because he's never lied about something like that ever before. I guess it's you want to get on here and be interesting. By just calling me a fucking liar, so I'm not taking it anymore. Okay, you said how you feel, and I said it's tough to know. Right, okay, good. It's tough to know then. I'm sorry you can't figure that out. <laughs> I, I, listen, I'm entitled to an opinion already. Okay, then it's a it's a dumb opinion. I'm entitled. To That's think your it's, opinion. I'm entitled to think it's a dumb opinion. And you're totally entitled to think it's a dumb opinion. It's not. Do you it's, think it's that not I think as it's a cut, dumb opinion is a dumb opinion? It's not. A, it's not as cut and dried as you try to make it out to be. That everybody should know. What the rules are about lying? For not a person lying. in this fucking room hasn't lied, and uh, you but know, that's not the point. Yes, it is, guy. We're talking about lying. Who about do you think? Stuff. Is, okay, John, me, you, Will, Benji. Who's got the highest lying percentage in this room? I don't know. No idea. I, I, I don't got know a pretty you guys. I don't know what okay. you tell your wife. I don't know what you tell. I have no idea. You I guys gotta, don't say shit on the air that I say. I shouldn't say it. I fucking blurt it out. That's why you know I lied in the first place. Because eventually, I tell the fucking truth. How do you know I'm not lying about? How do you know I didn't see the shrink for four months? And the other thing isn't a lie. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you don't That's know. That's how do I know that you're? You just it's said all, it. It's all entertainment, guy. But how do I know when you're entertaining me or not? If you don't know that, then you are a monkey. What are you talking about? <laughs> if I, see, if I say something, so funny, I should know that you might have lied about <laughs> not going to the shrink. No, Gar, you're picking and choosing what you think is a lie and what you don't think is a lie. But do you understand why there might be confusion? No. 
Yeah, but you got to look, we're we're on the air saying shit, dude. You got to you got to learn to separate that from me as a person. You just have to do that. That's what life. I don't know how much you guys lie to people in your life. I have no idea. You could lie to your wife every fucking day, Gar. You could lie to your neighbor every day. You could lie to your PTA fucking people every. You could lie to the defense. Well, I don't coach know what you do when you leave here either. Okay. I so don't know what you tell. How your, can I answer that question? I don't know what you tell your sister or your mother or anybody else. How can I answer that question? Who well, how lies can anybody the most? answer it? Right, well, you asked it. Ask, okay. Ask for, answerable questions. For the. Whatever. You have to separate what's on the air and what's in your private life or real life or whatever. Right. So that means that anything you can say you say on the air could be bullshit, right? It if could, it's it for entertainment be, purposes. It, it, it could be a joke. Right. Yeah. So that's exactly the point yesterday. That but, we were saying but, it but could be bullshit. Bring, but, but you see, if it's that gray, why even bring up anything that's said on the air? I mean, you know, why why talk about anything I've said on the air? Because yeah, that's what the show's supposed be, to just if talk. It could, if it could be a joke, then just say, oh, Artie was joking around. I don't know. That's what we said. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Well, we That's said not it was what a you said. It was yeah. a lie instead of a joke. No, you said, I said it was a funny lie. You said you can't. You can't take my word for on anything, and that's that's you being serious. I, I I don't know if it was that serious like that. Right. But, well, I don't know. But, I mean, were I don't you think trying to be funny when you said that? I, 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 I'm obviously the most unfunny person and should no, be on the Gary show. No, Gary, I'm not funny. Gary's funny. Do you think funny. you're a funny guy, Will? You don't know me. You I don't know I me. Do. No, I, you don't. Well, I've worked with you for eight That's years. That's a difficult no, question don't. coming from you because you're way funnier than all of us. So when you say it, it's sort of a bullshit question. Well, Will could be funny, but he's not. He's not already funny. Artie, you've never hung out with me. You don't know whether I'm funny or not. He's the 80th funny eagle fan I've ever met. Okay, well that's fine. He's not even in the top 79. Dude, the guy who said he'd throw Ralph off the 700 section. That guy should be working. One trick funny because <laughs> guy had one good line. He's he like the, like Ralph, the, unna- he like the unknown Ralph, comic. He called Ralph a heatless fag. But hey, Art, that's yeah, that's, un- that's an unfair card to play though because you're right. I mean, Art, you, Gary's right. You're you're you make your living being funny. When you ask me well, if, I, if you I think I'm funny, th- when you guys come into this show and try to be funny, then you're coming into my territory. So I'm going to judge your funniness on no, this no, show. No, because it's no, we're I don't not. You're funny no, watching no, no, a Philly game with your friends. This show's not always about being funny. We're not in your territory. The purpose of this show is not to be funny round the clock well you're we, doing we, a bang up job we discuss the wrap up show once in a while we'll crack a joke because it just happens to be there whether you think that joke is funny oh. or not you're totally entitled to but we're well, not I coming didn't get the memo you make it so- I didn't no, get no. The wrap up you make it so- you make it sound like we're coming in here trying to be you and we're not no no i don't think you're trying to be Wait, me can i say, can I say one thing no, that, that might frame or, or, the, or, or, that or might frame the debate a little bit is it about that cunt reporter benji if you say it again i'm gonna punch in the fucking head seriously stop no stop i'm gonna punch in the fucking head well, All right, stop. No, Wait, why is that the worst thing that's the, been said? The, the thing no that bullshit. I want to say is Are you it... retarded? No, I... <laughs> then just fucking listen. I don't understand why that would get you so mad. Well, because you're trying to be funny and you're not being funny. Um, is that the part that's getting you mad? Yes, the wrap-up exact... show is not about being funny. I mean, unless the, the, you're the thing I was going to say is... Ex- it's funny... Well, try saying it. See what happens. <laughs> if funny presents itself, did you hear Gary? Then you try to be funny. Well, I guess what, what I wanted to point out is, like, if you're going to lie, obviously as a, as a comedian, your premise is... It can go anywhere from exaggeration to all-out lies for entertainment purpose. So if you're on the radio, I think it's akin to that on some level. So I guess the definition of a lie in terms of it affecting your friendship has to be uh, defined as something that's hurtful to you or the show. In your person. See, see, in other words, if you agree with what he just said, and I do, then assuming any, being offended by anything I say on the air has to go out the window because something on the air could be anything. If I ever, did I ever come to you in your office and say, "Guy, listen, I'm not on heroin, man. I promise you." Did I ever say that to you, no. person? No. And then, like, because that, I'd be a little more insulted by. When I'm on the radio, like Greg said, I'm trying to be entertaining. So for you to take anything I say on the air as as gospel and to be offended by it is a little retarded. So no, when, you, when you, hold on, hold on, hold on. When you talk to us off the air during commercial breaks about your experiences at the shrink, should I know the difference? And you did. Howard said, you go to the shrink? Oh, you mentioned whatever, whatever. No, yeah, because I did go to the shrink a couple of times, and I talked about my experience well, Even there. that number, did you go one and I a half times? I didn't make up stuff that didn't happen at the shrink. I went I went about two times, and I told Howard what what my opinion was of it. So you asked your shrink if it was okay for you to drink, or you told your shrink you were going to drink? Yeah, that's the last time I went. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I had tequila, and then I So in your out. second visit, you told him? Yeah. It came up pretty quick. <laughs> no, and I'm not saying I didn't say that to defend Artie. I'm saying Thank it, you, Greg. It, I'm saying it to point out that there may be things that you've said to Gary off the air, and for it seems to me that in in terms of anybody that you have a relationship with off the show, they can be angry about a lie that affected 
them in some way. Right. But I don't know. I'm unclear on if ha- how that affects what he says on the air. As Because certainly Howard may not have a small penis. And Dean Martin didn't really have a drink in his hand all those years. There's certain yeah. things. I, I, Greg, I swear to God, I don't even know what you're talking about. No, I, 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 got, I, I got lost. Why do I, why do I, why do I saying, know what he's talking about? I don't know. I'm just I mean, the, I'm no, stupid. You, you I'm just, have a problem with Artie lying, right? And it affects your friendship. Correct? Yeah, okay. No, I don't All think right. that's on. So what think... I'm saying, wait, hold on, Will. I'm just no, no, trying no, no, to clarify but, 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 this so we understand this. Even... What I'm saying is a lie versus comedic license is something, and I'm not defending Artie because if he did lie to you off the air, then that is wrong, and that's something that he has yeah, to listen, address. Artie not going to the shrink was no comedic license. It was just him lying. No, well, we, we didn't laugh about that on the air? That didn't create an hour of, of no, material? No, did it create material? Yes. Did we laugh about it? No. Yes, we did. did, did, did yeah, Howard laughed about it. What he's saying is, if you're going to admit that sometimes while I'm on the air in that forum, I'm trying to be funny, you can't take anything I say as gospel. And to be offended by it is stupid. If I come to you off the air and say something to you that's a direct lie that really betrays you, then then that's a different story. And that's never happened, and I've never done that to a friend, and I will never do well, that ever in my life. Artie, Artie, what about when you called me and gave me a 20-minute speech about how you couldn't come to my wedding because you couldn't be around drugs and alcohol? That's because, the truth. No, because your uh, shrink told you you couldn't do it. Yeah, and, listen, and then you went there and said you didn't want to come because you didn't want to go because uh, whatever. Because I was, being, cause I was no, but, trying to be funny, and I said I don't want to Artie, that's the truth, and I, I don't I care. You're not wedding. offending me. That's the truth, though. Well, I did didn't want to go you because I didn't want to drink. at Same reason I didn't go to Fred's party. Party. I don't. I don't go to things where I, you know, if I think I'm going to fall off the wagon. But I think you were at that point. You were still doing heroin. Well, I wasn't. I was not. I was not. I was on the heroin wagon at that point. And how would you know anyway, man? Because exactly. you talk, because, it's all, because, spe- it's all it's, speculation. Because exactly. the, uh, so again, shut up about it. On the wrap up show, don't talk what, about shit you don't know because you're going to get in a bad area. But it, but in, on the wrap up show, and again, I asked you two weeks ago, Artie, how long were you on heroin? You said off and on from the end of August. Till December. Off and on. Well, well, Will's wedding was in what September. What does off so- and on mean? But how do we? I don't know, man. But it, it could have. I said off and on. I didn't say constantly from August to December. So the second you got off of heroin was just happened to be the week that Will was getting married. It could have been. Drink. It could have been. I got off heroin to go to Afghanistan. Somebody said earlier, Artie, about ultimately Gary should be mad at Howard, not at you, because Howard is the one who lets you. Howard runs the show. We all know that here. Okay, if Howard was mad at me, there'd be consequences for what I'm doing. He's not. So Gary should go to Howard and say, listen, Artie's been disrespecting the show, and I don't like that. And Howard then has to react to that. You're right. And Howard doesn't react to it. Okay. So what am I going to do? So does that give you a license to basically do whatever you want to do? Yeah. Until Howard tells me not to. The Greg Fitzsimmons school of, you know, he's talented enough to do what he wants. That's not what I said. It's it's sort of exactly what you said, Greg. No, what I said was, what Artie said is true. Look, there's a guy who makes personnel decisions here. It, it, there's no democracy. There's no real. There may be some input, but it's his decision. Do I think it's a good idea that Artie's in bad shape and he's still on the air? That's not for me to decide. I think that it's an issue that you but, know. But, but when you were here, you said, "Listen, you take what you get." Artie's a talent, and why are you insulted by yes. that guy? No, no, you are a talent. Okay, a, and, and no, you're no, not. He, he, no, he said because you're a talent. That you are held to a different standard, and, and I which, am. Is, which you are. But then he went on to say, "You I should get paid more than, you, than you other should be able to do whatever. Why do I get paid more you than should be able to do whatever you want. No, 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 that, no that, you should no. be able to do whatever you want. Pissed off that they don't make how much the same amount. You're missing the point. I didn't finish the thought. No, but you're and adding you, your own thought. I'm I not adding that. it. You said it. No, I did not say Artie should be able to do whatever he wants. You added that. No, you did. I ended at Artie. Has problems. He doesn't always come in on time. Howard doesn't have a problem with that. So apparently, that is those are the standards for Artie. You're exa- not set by you. But I've been late, I've been late I ten say, times. In I didn't eight say years, it was good. I didn't encourage it. I didn't say. But, but it's not true because your exact your exact example was that you worked on a show and that you came in late because you wrote jokes that got on. And you know what? It wasn't right, but fuck them. No, well, no, guess no, what? No, if I'm doing a monologue every day, them. I'm keeping the guy who writes the funny jokes, not the guy who's here on time who no, sucks. No, Gary, you're, That's the you're, world, assi- you're assigning a cause effect to that that wasn't there. I didn't say, fuck you, I'm coming in late and leaving early. I came in late because I was really unhappy. And when I was there, I worked really hard and I got a lot of shit I think on. the exact word was like tough shit, I think. No, that was not the exact words. I defy you to show me that on the tape. See, you're Gary, put, you're, you're, you're offended your by him. 
that. I, I, be, acting like a producer, you're offended by what he just said because you have animosity probably towards funny people because you want to be one. <laughs> but 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 uh, I, I, clearly that's what's going Artie, on. There were, there you're, were sh- you're offended by There him. were a shitload of funny people before you got here and they didn't offend me. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Sam Kinn has never offended you no, by his behavior. No, he did not. No, he did not because he didn't work for me. <laughs> right. Okay. He did not. He never offended All me right. by his behavior. Okay. okay. But, but that's a Jackie dumb, never annoyed you? No, because Jackie took the show seriously. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jackie, who fucking walked out on a contract. Hey, pick your fucking different... battles, man. You no, know, it's not a different story. That's not disrespecting the I, show. I, oh, no, but I was offended by that. Okay, I, so, so I thought, you, what but, you just but, said was wrong. You said someone else did offend you in history of the show. Yeah, he didn't do it on a daily basis. Yeah, uh, neither am I, Gar. I've offended you on a da- daily no, basis right. for no, you're wrong. Years? You're wrong. It's not a daily basis. You're right. Okay. You're right. I'm right about but everything, it's more, apparently. It's, it's more... Whatever. Gar, listen, let me tell you something. If you're if you're fucking uh, Ellen DeGeneres or Jay Leno, and there's a guy that writes jokes that get laughs every fucking time, but he's always an hour late. Sometimes he falls asleep, blah, blah, blah. But there's another guy who's on time every day who looks neat and never has a problem or a drink in his life, and everything sucks. Who are you keeping at, at, at higher in time? Yeah, I, I don't know, because I've never been in that situation until I mean, now. Don't know, if you don't know the answer to that guy, then you're a dumbass, stupid motherfucker. Thank you. You, you hire the... You keep the guy who writes sucky jokes? Wait, no, wait. Don't, don't, don't name call because this is no, I, let, him, I really, let him name call this no, is how he feels there's a disconnect between because you have it in that position you have the man standing next to you is late a lot and he works for you and you haven't fired him why we threatened to fire him and but you haven't fired him. it was very close but Benji why will did tell you, you keep you, him we gave him one more chance but why you wouldn't give that same chance to somebody well, else that's any job that would be the fucking cashier that's, that's not true point. that's not true that's my point no, well, which one am true. i listening no, to because now? because benji writes funny stuff that's why he's there of course, because we we like the work that he does. Okay. But he was getting to a point where his work was good, but not good enough to put up with what was going on, and it was close. So let me get this and straight. Benji, no, Benji, just back me up. Was it close? No. Was that was that meeting? No. You were not afraid in that meeting. No. Are you being honest? Yes. Fire him, Gary. He's it's not, not Gary's decision. It would be Howard's decision. Exactly. That's Robert's, the other point. Robert it's Smigel. not Gary's decision. I Robert Smigel, who's like one of the greatest TV writers in history, now does occasionally TV Funhouse and SNL, which is like a one-minute, two-minute short film. He used to have to show up at 7 in the morning, say it's 4 in the morning. Now he's got the respect and the luxury. Now, I think the problem is he's not saying fuck you to Lauren Michaels. He's saying this is what I want to contribute. If you want it, that's fine. And is he a I'm, full-time writer there, or do they just expect He him was. To, but is he now? No, he gets to do what he wants because he's that good. And I'm not but, saying but that Artie gets to do what he wants. What I'm saying is it's that is the criteria for Howard keeping him. In the same way that the criteria for you keeping Benji are that he's providing something that you guys need. No, but, and whether or not Greg, he does it late or early, it doesn't matter. And Greg, honestly, listen, I don't get to do whatever I want because I'm not late all the time. I'm not absent all the time. We're fo- we're focusing on stuff that's the minority of the time. Yeah, but you're contradicting that's, yourself, Artie. You do get to do what you want. You just said it. If Howard told you to stop doing this, you would stop. So you do get to do what you no, want. No, no, no. You think, you think if I came in late every single day of the fucking week or if I was really out two days a week, Howard wouldn't eventually get rid of me? I mean, I don't get to do what I want. I don't want to be here every day at 6, but I get my ass here 98% of the time every day at 6. That's disrespecting the show. And when I get here, I'm always ready, and I'm funny, and I'm honest, and I'm, I'm a, I am I tell stories that are embarrassing, but I think they're funny. I, I, I do what I got to do. I do my job. You know, I, I, I used to go to the Tuesday meeting all the time. I don't do it anymore. Howard doesn't give a fuck because it doesn't affect what I do on the air. I mean, you know, that's just how it is, man. I, you know, I'm sorry if you feel like, the, you know, I'm getting special privileges. Nobody is knocking your ability on the air. Exactly. I don't think that's exactly. what's the question here. Well, I think, you know, well, Howard well, shows up for the beginning of the show and he leaves at the end of the show. He's the guy we all follow. Everybody else here does that. You, on occasion, haven't done that. And when Benji walks in three minutes late. And Benji's gets... not late all the time. No, he's either. not. No, he's it's not. not. It's, it's, and again, me and Benji are here over 90% of the time on time, and we don't take days off off 90% of the time. And we don't do heroin. You know, that's that's just how it is. You're making it sound, when you have these conversations, you're making it sound like I'm out half the fucking year. That's not the case, man. I didn't say you were out half the year. Yeah, but that's what it sounds like to someone who's listening. It sounds like, okay, we don't care if Artie's out all the time or if he's late all the time. That's what you, that's what you say. Well, the, Sometimes I'm, you don't hear what you say. Well, Because well, I'm, th- I'm a fucking dumbass. Well, the other thing that you're up against you is... Didn't, uh, no, you're not a I'm dumbass. I'm a big guy. old fucking you dumbass. You didn't answer that question honestly. You didn't. You would fire the guy who writes the shit jokes. You know you would. You didn't want to answer it because you don't want to agree with me on it. You would keep the fuck up who writes good shit because you got to go out there and say it. 
That's that's what makes the world go around. People, Babe Ruth fucked whores all night. He hit three home runs when he was hungover. That's why they didn't fire him on the Yankees. Right, Matt now, Kelly did that a couple of times. All right, look, you're not Babe Ruth, so fucking shut up. I know, but I'm, now, saying, but, but, but I'm using an analogy no, no, of like, I, 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 whatever, to hear, for some reason, Howard thinks I'm good enough not to fire but based on is, what I'm doing. But I think what we're, we're coming from is, Gary, there's two, there's two levels that you are not happy with Artie's lying, Artie's work ethic, or whatever. One is personal as a friend, and part of that is concern that as much as you guys are angry, I know you love Artie and you care about him, and that you're concerned well, I don't know about. That, I, the funny thing is, I'm not even sure that Artie knows that anymore. No, he doesn't. Artie, Artie is this, not by, in by a the great way, place. By the way, this is the first time you've ever said to me, and again, it's on the air that you would truly think I've been disrespecting the show for the last day much. You never pulled me aside and said that. You said it now. I mean, you never pulled me aside and said that, Gar. I, I don't know that it's my place. It's a feeling I have. You're the producer of the show. Why would yeah, it be your place? But you're right. At the end of the day, it's Howard's decision. So if I feel that way and right, he doesn't, well, yeah, then, then, then it's not then, my place then, to then, say then, it. This all, the point is just completely moot here then because it is. You're gonna, a, I, I, I know, can, if you, you pull me aside and say, all right, listen, I think you're disrespecting the show, that's that's what a friend does. Uh, you know, you're saying but it would on you, the air now. Would you change? Or would you say, hey, Howard doesn't give a shit? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Howard doesn't I'll tell you what. I would try to get it together. I really would out of respect for you. But if push came to shove and I I woke up hungover one day or whatever, because it's not Howard saying it, I might go to the phone and say I'm not in, you know. But but if and look, I'm probably I'm enough of a fuck up to where I have lost jobs. I've made those decisions before. I'm very self destructive. It's it's horrible. You know, I, I wish I wasn't like that, but I, I think am. you guys are so different in your lives that Gary, you take it personally that he, he does he's not doing this to be hostile. He's fucking miserable. I mean I've known I've known Artie a long time. I, I could say we talked about it backstage. I'm not. I'm, I said it on the air. I'm going through a bad time. I'm not happy. I look at Artie. He does not. You haven't seen happy to me in a long time. I haven't been happy in, a, in 20 years. So he's not getting off on coming in late and being a fuck up. And I, I yeah, think I'm not the party, party that's concerned yeah, about work, Artie, guys. and we all are, is reacting to it uh, quite honestly, almost like on intervention. When you see a family member, somebody who cares about someone with a disease, and they can't control it, but there's, a, there's that guy. But then there's you as the boss on the job. But at the end of the day, here's the thing that's really funny. I am not Artie's boss in any way, shape, or form. And Artie's called me that for years because at the end of the day, I can't fire Artie. I can't tell Artie what to do. I can't tell him where to be. It all comes from Howard. So I'm really not Artie's boss. I'm just a guy who produces the show who can direct Artie. Hey, Artie, we're all going out to Vegas. Be there by this day. And look, I don't tell him what to do ever. Here's the other thing. Have I ever come to you and told you what to do? Never again. Because I don't don't have that power. But in in the beginning, you were the guy... The first guy, and I look, I, I, I yearn for these times again because stuff has gotten so crazy in my life, professional and personal. But, you know, the first couple of years I was on this show, uh, when I first started doing the show, you were the guy who I talked to. You were the guy who called me and told me when I was going to be on. Uh, you were the guy I grew up listening to. I had, you know, I, I, I do have respect for you as a producer of the show. In, in, as years went by, you know, it, uh, you get familiar with something. And, and, and it breeds and, contempt. Uh, well, you know, yeah, it breeds contempt, but I think contempt's the bad word here. I just think it breeds, uh, for me, complacency. And, you know, I see how it operates. Now, instead, I'm not just the fan or the comic who sits in every once in a while. I see how the place really operates. And I see, yeah, it really is all Howard's call. And, um, I mean, look, there's been times in the past, Howard sat me down and said, here's the, he did research. He found the shrink. He went he, he went out of his way to find the shrink for me, and that was five years ago. I still haven't called the shrink. So in a way, I'm not doing what Howard tells me to do either. Because Greg, no, he like, didn't tell you know, what to do. He suggested. Okay, That's a big difference. okay, but still, when a guy like Howard, who you respect, suggests that, you might at least give the guy a call. I've never done that, and that's a little. Dis- he said he's been disrespected by that, but Greg brings up a point, and you know, Will said this on the air too. He was mad at me, but you know what? He's 100 percent right. The bottom line is. I am a, I'm a miserable fuck. I'm miserable. I don't like being this miserable. I hate it. I'm not a happy guy. And and there's people in my life that catch those effects uh, from me not being happy personally. You know, women I've been involved with, especially, you know, recently and uh in my and in my work life. I'm miserable. I don't I don't like that that's true, but it's 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 true. What would make you happy, Artie? I don't know, man. I have no idea. I don't know. If I, mean, I knew, I'd do it. I mean, I you're a huge success comedically. I assume you're doing very in well one financially. Ar- in one area of my life, I'm successful. I've lived out a lot of dreams in show business, and I have a lot of money. I do. Good money for me. But that's one piece of life's puzzle. All of the rest are a complete mess. It's a mess. It's a, com- you know, it's just a... I, I, it's just a mess, man. What can I tell you? Health, uh, drug addiction, depression, uh, loneliness, everything, you know, maybe overstress, overwork. 
it's just how it is, you know? Greg, the other thing at the core of this with Gary that I think you're missing is that Gary really, really cares about Artie on a personal level. I just said he loves him through all this anger. It's because he loves him. And when but, you know what? Somebody, if you didn't like somebody as much as I like Artie, you couldn't piss me off the way you can. Exactly. Well, you could. Well, well, why? Uh, you know, and I Wait, feel so the I'm same sorry, way about I, you pissing me off. Like, if someone said, like, the point I was trying to make for, if Ralph had said that on the air, I mean, that's Ralph being Ralph. I don't care. But yesterday, that fucking ate away at my stomach when I heard that. Fat joke, man. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, look, I've been uh, I've been sober for twenty years, minus a year and a half. Bullshit, when I that's 40, a lie. When I turned forty, <laughs> <laughs> and I I look at Artie, and I you know I can relate to a, the you know that he's he's running away and he's hiding, whether it's whether it's drugs or whether it's food or whatever, and, and there's not there's nothing left. You're worn out. Right. And, uh, that's for sure. I'm burnt out. You're burnt out, and uh, you're showing up to a show every day, and you're working most weekends, and to recover, to truly recover and get sober. You need time to go do that, and really? until until you do, it's going to be you're not going to feel anything good. Listen, man, you know how fucked up it became. It it has all become so fucked up. You, when I was 24 years old, driving a cab and parking it outside the comic strip to run in and ask a guy to watch it to do a 20 minute set. Do you know how much I would want of uh, kill to do a roast on Comedy Central? You know what I mean? Right. Like, and and last year I blew it off. I blew off a roast. I was on a phone with a guy telling me he'd send me a private jet to go roast a guy who's a friend of mine. What happened, man? What happened to the guy who was 24 who wanted that so bad? I don't know what happened. It's so depressing to me. Well, I, I, I know what that, happened. And when I think about that, I get insanely depressed. I, I think you got it. You got what you wanted. When are you where you are you beyond where you thought you'd be when you were the twenty four? Look, kid? everybody, I think Greg will uh, attest to so this. I mean, I, everybody, I think I wanted to be. I wanted to be Jim Carrey by now. Okay, but you you, know, of you, course. But I'm, I'm look. I, if it ended tomorrow, I could put a spin on my career where you know what I made some noise and I'm very proud of it. So, but, I wouldn't be disappointed, but of course I thought I'd be like everybody else. I thought I'd be Adam Sandler, or Jack Black, or Jim Carrey or something. You know, I thought I'd be a movie star. Hey, Art, beyond yesterday, what Gary said, what Will said. Did, has something else been going on the last couple of days? Because you do seem like, have, has it been like some sort of hell? There is something that happened in my personal life, yeah. That that was a really bad, shitty, shitty thing to hear. It's, it's you gonna want to exploit it? Gonna, right, of course. Right, exactly. Do I want? <laughs> you know what? No, part of me does want to say it out loud. But I, 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 it's something I, it's really, even for me, a, a no-no. Can I just say, can I just ask this one question? Personal or professional? Personal. Okay. Personal. Uh, so, you know, because it, it would affect uh, a couple other people. Right. But Chlamydia? really, and, and, every, and everything, <laughs> no. And, and uh, but here's what I should have realized years ago is, uh, you know, every story I tell affects other people in my life. So, you know, that, that, that hasn't been great that I've been so forthright, but, you know, what are you going to do? The past is the past. Well, you're, I mean, I feel like, uh, again, talking about addiction, you're, you're stuck because the, the, once you become addicted to something, your self-esteem goes away and your ability to step back and say there's someone beneath the money and the, the gigs and the success that underneath there, there's this sounds corny, but you know underneath there, you used to know that there right. was somebody that was worth fighting for. And oh, right now, yeah. it's you feel empty and so the only thing that's keeping you going is this stuff that's actually working against you. You know, it's funny. Uh, you talk about, you know, what we used to be and stuff. I bring this up to Greg all the time. The first time I ever met Greg, we were, I was probably like 27 or 28 and we both did a weekend at the old Catch a Rising Star, the one that was on West 28th Street off 8th Avenue. Yeah. And I, I'll never forget this because my family was there. And the lineup was Greg, myself, Jim Gaffigan, and... Uh, Ray Romano. And Ray Romano, right. So uh, I had done a year on Mad TV, and Ray Romano was saying to me, uh, what's it like being on a TV show? Do you like it? I said, well, no, I, I hate L.A. Because he had just shot his pilot. The pilot got picked up. And I said, do you like it? He goes, I remember him saying this. We... we we all made about five hundred dollars that weekend, right? yeah. <laughs> and Romano needed the five hundred mm -hmm. bucks, you know. And by this time, he was already forty, and had been on the you know stand up circuit for a while. And I remember I was like twenty eight, and I said to him, "Do you still like? Do you still like this after all these years? Like, are you psyched?" He goes, "Well, I'm psyched that I'm getting something that might get me off the road." And I said, "What do you think of this show?" And he goes, "I hate the name." He goes, "The name I <laughs> I want to throw up over, but they love it." And I said, "Who else is on the show?" And he said, "Peter Boyle." And I can remember the one, because I had such a bad experience in L.A. I was trying to say something to cheer him up, and I said, um, 
I said, Peter Boyle, man, that's the I love Peter Boyle. He goes, yeah, he's funny, he's funny. I, he goes, but I think I suck on it. And he thought he sucked. Like he thought he sucked on. It. He thought the show sucked. He, he, he thought everything sucked. You know? Isn't that the nature of most comedians? Yes, that's the point I'm trying to make. Like now he's a billionaire, and I, we, I, I think if you, you know, and I think if you talk to him now, he'd still think a lot of. He still thinks a lot of things suck. But at least you know he's got kids. He's got a wife. He could look at. I don't know. I, it, it's in our nature, maybe. I remember, you know, I remember Greg felt the same way. Jim Gaffigan thought everything sucked. I, listen, we I, were back there miserable. We were talking about Dave Attell today. Dave Attell's a miserable, miserable guy, person. but a great guy. Uh, but, a great guy. Uh, you but know, I, I, I would know. tell the story. Jackie, when Jackie worked on the show, Jackie, I could tell you every excuse for the day of the year why Jackie would tell me why that weekend show was going to suck. Okay, yeah, right. Memorial Day, everybody's going to picnics. Nobody's going out. I'm fighting Thanksgiving traffic. Uh, kids are back at school. March like Jack, Madness. Every weekend. Oh, the, I'm I'm in Syracuse and there's a big game. And and Jacob would come back every weekend. It'd be sold out. But he would tell me in advance every weekend why nobody was coming to the show. Yeah. Well, well because uh, your self esteem is over invested in what you do for a living, and it's like and literally the definition of a persona is a mask. It's it's a it's a person you present to the public because inside you fucking hate that guy and comedians become that as they get successful they start internalizing this this when we talked about you lying on the show well are you projecting a character that's funny or is this really you and then when when as a friend gary you're seeing this projection and and then you're feeling uh somehow betrayed by him not really being that guy but which is legitimate i mean if you care about somebody and they're telling you things that are ultimately you know Beneath your anger is your fear that already is something really bad will happen to him. Of course. More than the show. Yeah, but, you know, and another thing, think about how fucked up you'd be psychologically, because th this is most comedians. Most comedians like to pretend they hate everybody. They don't like anything. But inside, you crave people's fucking uh, 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 acceptance more than anything. But why else would you get up there and do what you do? But in, uh, but on the outside, you're portraying and, and putting off, like, eh, you know, I hate this, you know. But you, you, you could look at a guy in an audience and say, I hate that motherfucker. But you want him to laugh at you so much, you, you know, and that creates such a conflict in your head. You don't know what the fuck you like anymore. And, and uh, you know, that and the stress of traveling and everything, I mean, you become a miserable bastard. And I always said maybe, I remember talking to Romano and saying, God, I hope I'm not that negative <laughs> when I'm 40. Well, now I'm 41 and uh, I've had some success and I am I would beat him in any negativity contest. <laughs> Ralph Sorella, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, now. Hi, Ralph. A lot of love in the room. Yeah. Uh, I just want to add to that. You know, I lost my train of thought because now I'm just dying to hear what the thing Artie did a couple days ago that... Uh... It's not something I did, Ralph. It was something that... It's news I got about something. And... He's not going to deal with he it. Doesn't so wanna, he doesn't want to talk about it. Uh, he yeah, sounded right. like he almost was going to talk about it. No? <laughs> I was. I was. No. Come on, Artie. Honestly, no. I was never even close to talking I won't, about uh, it. I won't... Uh, I'll, I won't I'll, you know what, Ralph? I'll call you tonight and you can tell Howard. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, you know, I think you guys are. Getting, Every time I mean, Howard has a new shirt on, I think he knows something else about me because he saw Ralph the day before. Tuesday morning is usually a good time to. Yeah. No, I tipped them off to something. No, uh, and you know, and getting back to that thing, I explained that on the air with uh, you and Gary and Iraq that I was goofing around with Howard, and he went, he went and said something on the air, and I, you know, that was. That was not true. What you know what I mean? I, he yeah, but you got in his head, Ralph. You did, and you yeah, know it no, affected absolutely. our friendship. It and did. I explained that on the wrap-up show to Gary, and I thought I thought he sort of understood what I was saying, and you accepted that, Gary. That you understood I, that. I, uh, I may have understood it, but I can't get it out of my head. And okay, I'm, well, I don't, I'm, I'm not. Sorry, sure, I'm and I'm not even sure that I blame that. Blame you for that. I, I'm sorry about that. And you know, but Artie, do you? Is it really so hard for you to fathom why? People don't take you at your word when, you know, why do people have to sit and sort out with what's true and what's not with you? What might be drug related? What might not? What you might be saying to protect somebody? What You, you know, it, it's not. It, it, my point was when you were telling that story on the air, and I think what everybody said and made the point, and Will made this point too, and he's right, you know, maybe Artie's just making up a story for the air because it sounds good. Who cares? If that's really how you feel, then how could you judge my life at. Uh, on any level by but stuff I say on the air. Life. If it's all if it's all just bullshit and all just for comedy, uh, then how could then you really would have to put that aside 
which is hard to do, put that aside as if it's a scripted sitcom or something, and then just base how you feel about me by everything I say to you off the air. That would be fantastic. But that doesn't happen in, on this show. It doesn't. Right. There's, there, you, you don't say that you don't think there's a lot of gray area and confusion with what's real and what's not just in general on the show? Uh, yes, there is, which is why, how could you, again, I, I think there's a lot of gray that which, with what goes on on the show. So how could you make an opinion? How could you make a personal opinion well, I based on the, anything? I think the consensus is people aren't sure based on a lot of other things, like when you're speaking the truth and when you're not. And like even Greg says, you know, there's, you know, you're taking artistic license with a story maybe. You, your, your job is to tell stories and to, to be interesting and funny on the air. And, right. you know, if you didn't have that cup of pee in your closet, if you did or whatever, I just said <laughs> it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's a funny story. Right. Well, I think that, you know, this is Why the longest running the reality show in history. Well, and the, ca- the cameras are show, never that's off. the point. No, but I watched American Idol last night, which I haven't seen in years, and these chicks are fighting and screaming and crying and I thought people don't act like that this show raises the stakes you I mean I think you've talked about it there's times where you might be experiencing something you might actually push push the envelope just to see if it becomes a story on the radio I mean it spills over both directions and Howard you know how, and I'm not judging him on any level for this because he's a showman before anything. But, I mean, Howard encourages that behavior from all of us. I mean, so, you know, when John used to come in and rat on people, Howard loved it. You know, he's not going to get mad at John the way the guy was that we ratted on is. So, look, I mean, this is – it's a great sort of – I think it's like a great human experiment here. And, yeah, I mean, Howard completely encourages all that. I mean, yeah. Sal running into this mall and – Right. Making no, an the, announcement. The best example of that was after you guys had this fight this morning. You saw that smile on Howard's face. He, Look on, he, a, of course, and he loved it. He, he loves, loves, he loves it. But on on any other team, listen, Howard. The brilliance of what Howard did here is he's created a show where even rejected bits that he hates could become funny within the context of the show. Like if Sal pitched something comparable to the Nick Gers thing at a meeting at the Tonight Show or at Saturday Night Live or wherever. They go, no, we're not doing this. And it would never see the light of day. On uh, Howard's created a situation where it can see the light of day by Howard goofing on it and all of us goofing on it. So Sal then goes in his head, look, I should do something like that again because it was just an hour of funny shit. And you know that's how he thinks. And you know when he has to make that judgment again, he's going to go for it because Howard, it's rare that Howard rejects something. Because Howard's going, look, this is all interesting. It might be interesting for the audience to hear why I rejected this. So I'll play it and get their opinion. And that's a rare thing. That doesn't happen a lot. Yeah, hey. and, and, you know, you're completely right about you know, there's a lot of misdirected anger that goes on around that show. And if uh, if you're how uh, uh, Gary, if you're mad at Artie for disrespecting the show, you know, that's. That's that's on Howard, not on Artie. That's I mean, my Howard, point. Howard lets him do whatever you know. Artie's going to do what Artie's going to do. Well, Artie we, can attack people and get away with it. And we all, <laughs> thank you, Rob. Yeah. And we all, and we're all hypocrites on this level. Where if if um, and I put myself in this category. Uh, if we're mad at some somebody for something that Howard clearly does himself, we won't yell at Howard about no, it. No. We'll yell at the other person about it because that's it. I mean, you know, that's just how it is. That was the point I was trying to make with me spilling the high C that, you know, there's times where you've been mad that you're picking up Howard's toothpicks and shit. You could have easily said that to him, but you're not, you know, because, you know, we all do the same thing. And that misdirected anger, I think, creates a lot of frustration. And then it all... When there's someone you feel it's all right to yell at, that isn't Howard. You just go crazy, you know, because we get nuts. I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, it's, it's almost like the Howard. banking crisis now where these, these uh, CEOs are still taking $100 million bonuses. Meanwhile, they, they drove the company to the ground. And it's it's a little not that you're driving this company to the ground. I mean, it's actually good entertainment. <laughs> Somebody is. But, but, <laughs> but, Let but me I mean, you're, stock price. By, it ain't me. By you know, by Gary's definition, and by anybody's definition, you're not. You know, you're not. Certainly, there's not many jobs where you can admit to having drug use and whatever and no, keep your job. Right. Let me give you an example of what I just said that we're all hypocrites. And I w- and this was me yesterday. Yesterday, and I, I might get shit. From Howard about this, but I'm, I'm just going to say it because it's a great example of what I was just saying, and I'm at fault with it. Um, when when he was saying, who do we have in? And he said, oh, David Brenner. Yes. And Brenner's going, uh, for years, David Brenner lied about his age. And we're all going, we all knew you were lying about your age. Gary's caps. Gary said, who told you I wear caps? 
Gary, everyone knows you wear caps. I felt like saying before Brenner came in, like, look, who didn't know Howard got a nose job? <laughs> I mean, that's the most obvious nose job in the history. <laughs> Jerry, look at his schnoz on some of those fucking uh, Channel 9 shows. There's a hook in the fucking thing. <laughs> John Hyde Masterpiece. You know, what, what, I mean, so, so I, I, I went, listen, as a fan, okay, <laughs> as a fan, when I came in here and met Howard, I'm like, my God, that's that's a... A nose job. I mean, a clean, wonderful nose job. I, I, I can remember being at Dag Hammershaw Plaza. I was two feet from the guy. His nose was extraordinary. You could have you could have caught fish with the fucking thing. And uh, you know, and look, he's he's a, he's a guy who, like all of us, has some vanity. He got some money, and it's a great nose job. His nose, his nose, he looks like a shiksa for Christ's sake. But um, I felt like saying that, and I think that would have been funny to say. But I. I didn't have the balls to say it. I thought he'd get mad at me. And I didn't say it there, but I said it here, and we'll play it Monday. And, hey, Garrett, based on what Artie, <laughs> what Artie just said, yeah. when you guys think Artie lies about the drugs, and then you extrapolate it to Artie lies about everything, when Howard kept that No, 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 wait, no that's not what think, we said, or wait, Gary wait, this said. this is what happens, Benji. You, that's not what anybody said. Yeah. No, nobody said Artie lies about everything. They said we're not sure what to believe, which exactly. is a huge difference. You said, Artie so has, you said yesterday Artie has no credibility. No, but no, what happened said he has was, low what credibility. Happened was, no, no, see, what this, is, this is a situation where Gary might have not realized. We just replayed it, and Gary said that exact yeah, thing. I did, and, and it's not what I meant. What I meant was I didn't mean that Artie lies about everything. And that's what I, I got meant. But what I do mean is that everything that Artie says could be questioned. Right, right, but Which so is the, what I just said, what, what Artie just brought about up about the nose, nose thing, Howard lied about that for years. Does that make you question everything he says? I know. That, you know what? That's an excellent point. Howard told us all. I've never had plastic well, surgery. This goes back and, to your example. And Robin, and Robin was the best because when the revelations came out, she was like, "Your revelation is not that you had a fucking nose." Because <laughs> she knew, of course, but she knew. It's not just one lie. If, if Howard lied about the nose job and that was the end of it, that's one thing. If you then you asked think he lies Howard, about anything else? Howard, did you get your face pulled back? And he said no repeatedly for yeah, three no, months, no, no, and no, then no, he comes no, out. You know what I did? He get said my no face pulled repeatedly back. for seven years. About what? His his plastic surgery. What nose job? That's what we're talking about. I'm talking yeah, but about every time he came up, he got the chin shave in that area. Yeah, I will never get years, married. For seven years, I will years. never get. Well, that wasn't a lie. That was well, that wasn't a lie. That's, yeah, that's, 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 that's life. But for seven years, he told a direct lie. Why? Because it would have affected him in a negative way. You know how many phone callers in the four years I was at the regular radio called and said you've had plastic surgery, and he went no. That's a lie. When, that's a lie that's helping yourself. Ar- you know? Artie, when, when he got that, my mom saw him on TV. My mom calls me and goes, Howard got a nose job. That like, <laughs> like a week later, I go, no, no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. I gotta, I, I gotta, and I'm glad he did. He looks, you know what? He looks good. Howard has a look but, now that he developed. But, but I, you know, quite frankly, of course, I need work. I need a few chins taken off. Right, well, but, now, if there's a consensus then that there is uh, artistic license on this show and that everybody Well, Howard lying about his degree. nose job is not artistic right, but, license. But... I mean, look, Lucy. Uh, that's a lie. Lucy yeah. pretends to have a mustache so she can be in the show. It's comedy. People mm-hmm. lie. It becomes funny. Lucy I mean, didn't have a real mustache. No, no. See, the thing is, <laughs> she Lucy? wanted. To, no, Lucille the point Ball. is, the point is then, Lucy? Gary, you have to look at this. Look at your anger then, and say, okay, what what are the options for this anger then? It's not that, you know, it's not that Artie is fucking up the show in your eyes. It's not that he's not working as hard as you, which leaves the options of. You care about him a lot, and you're so worried that you're actually getting angry because you can't control it, or you feel like it's bad for the radio show. No, I mean, it's not bad for the radio. Right, so that's, that's, you where, you're conflict, not bad that's where you're conflicted show. about it. You're like, do I let this guy who I really think is falling apart keep doing this because it's good for the show, or do I personally go and say, look, you got to go to rehab, which may not be as entertaining, but hey, personally helps him. So that's got to be something I, you battle in your head all the time. I'll too. tell you right. I'll tell you right up front, and Howard will back me up on this. A year ago, if I were the one making the decision, I would have made you go to rehab. Right. And Howard has even said, when Howard says that I've had those conversations with him, they're not like, fuck Artie. They're like, I'm worried about Artie. Gar- I never thought they were like, fuck Artie. No, but I, but, I, I know that, man. But I, I know. I've, I've had probably a half a dozen times in the last year, I go, dude, I am really worried about Artie. I think he's in a bad fucking place, and maybe we should do something. Howard's like, do what? He comes to work right. when he's supposed to come to work. What right. do I, why is it my place to tell him what to do? And you've never been angry at Artie that he's missed work. I mean, no. you've been concerned about it, and we speculated on the show, but there's no anger like, oh, he's well, at work, I'm, we're at work, and he's not. No I know cares. what you're saying, but, yeah, I know, but it, it, what he said right. before, it's not, it's not he, even, sa- he said that you feel I disrespected the show. That, to me, indicates a little hostility. And, look, you should have it. I'm not saying you're wrong for that. You know, it's, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph, hold on. Mark in North Carolina, you're on the wrap-up show. Mark, are you there? Yes, good morning, guys. Hey, how you doing? Good morning. Um, hey, first off, um, you know, everyone loves Artie. I love you, Artie. 
Uh, big thing for me, two things I noticed from a fan's perspective. Uh, number one, uh, when Artie gets really mad uh, with anybody, with Teddy and today with uh, Gary, he brought up the money situation. And uh, when Artie really gets that boiling point before he throws something, it tends to be about money. And uh, I think obviously when Artie first got on board, um, he didn't think he should make as much as Gary. But after all these years and all his success, there still seems to be something he pokes uh, fun at with Gary. I don't think it's a uh, situation where he's going after Achilles' heel, um, like with the whole Afghanistan trip. I think there is some a truth to that. And secondly, um, for Gary, my only thing was already missing time. I believe it's with uh, Howard as well. It's on Howard, but why don't we have someone to fill in whenever he's out? And I'll listen to that. Thank you. All right. Thanks for your call, then. Well, Mark. I'll answer the back end of it. I think that. When Artie's out, we I don't think Howard feels a need to fill the spot. I think it's just like when Artie's here, he's here, and when he's not, he's not. And it's also not like I have a guy who lives around the corner that I'll call Look, right. show, when Artie says he's not coming in. The show was number one and the greatest show ever when I grew up, and no one talked but Howard and Robin 90% of the time. The show would be fine, you know, but, it, but it's not my decision. You could have any, uh, you know, people could sit in there. And does that worry me? Yeah, it might worry me a little bit, you know, uh, but uh, I don't think, I, you see, you got to realize if Howard's having some stranger in there and I get what he's talking about, he's got to, he, he's going to feel the ne necessity to interview that person, to pay attention to them, to learn about them. And he doesn't want to do that. That, that, you know, takes away from the show. It's annoying, I would assume. And Artie, do you always go to the money before throwing something? Was that caller right in speculating <laughs> on that? The the one time that I've thrown something, or the two times, did I go to money right before I threw something at Sal? No. Well, he's 50-50. I mean, he's uh, but it was that was a weird uh, shot you took at me this morning. Yeah, well, okay, look, I, I, I because Because, then I don't, you know, here's the funny thing. Artie, I swear on the life of my children, I don't know how much money you make. I don't no, know that. But I know how much you make because of a mistake here. But I don't know that you know that. I, I know you think you know Let's it. Let's write I, down how much we make. Would you? <laughs> yeah. It's a, well, it's you know a mistake how much you, Gary makes? I make 50 grand less than you a year. So now you know. But I don't know that. <laughs> I know that you just said that. I did the math because I know what you make. And this isn't drug related, so you I can believe I make 50 grand less a year. <laughs> I, I, I genuinely don't know the answer. Although I was on drugs looking at your chest. <laughs> All right, I gotta get out of here. I gotta go see the book. Well, just, to, just to, I mean, the money thing always comes up. Like I, I've been to therapy. But it's not an a few issue for times. me. But apparently, no, no, I, I'm saying if for I make Artie, more than Artie, then if, it shouldn't be. If his identity is like I said, so much in your career, that money represents everything you've given up: happiness, personal life, relationships. So when it gets <laughs> fucked with, it's a lightning rod. Listen, I, I've said this before. If I couldn't make the money I make on the road, I might be bitching about money here. But you know what? The fact of the matter is, I choose to do the road a lot and take that schedule because but honestly, you, what, I respect for Howard. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be the guy bitching about money. Could you make the money on the road that you make if you weren't here? No, absolutely not. Or could you have gotten the book deal if you weren't here? No I mean, way. You could have gotten no, the book no, deal. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. No, no, but I'm saying that. You, you make money here, but also... No way, because nothing. You're here. Listen, listen, I think it's even worse than that. I'd be fucking driving a cab if it wasn't for the show again. No, uh, you wouldn't be, uh, so you would be driving a cab. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying that um, the fact of the matter is I do have to fly to St. Louis one weekend. And, and I do but, that because... But I like to do it the fine have to. Do you have Gar to? Gar, Gar, if... Okay, would you do what I do if it meant quadrupling your paycheck? Quadrupling your paycheck. I would, but if I got to the point, so that's what I mean. Me, if I got to the point where it was making me miserable, which it clearly does make you miserable, I'd be enough, miserable. I might, I might rethink it. I might as well be miserable. I'll tell you what, I, I might as well be miserable in Phoenix. I'll, I'll, give, you a, I'll give you a perfect example. I could. Howard, <laughs> Howard. Look at that nose job. <laughs> oh, no. He's got to get it. Howard's outside the window right now looking at us. You know what it's like? It's like a kid with an ant farm and just watching his ants fighting. <laughs> All right. Artie, can I just say one thing? He doesn't have, he doesn't have, he wasn't listening to this, was he? No. I'm going to deal with that Monday. Going, I can I'll be you. fucking fired Monday. If I wanted to, I could, t I could continue to nice do personal thing. appearances and probably make more than I did when I was at K-Rock. Yeah, but quadruple, but I would rather... quadruple your fucking, no. I'm talking about, you know. If, would serious, you, serious money. I mean, God, we're yeah. talking life-changing money. That's why I feel I have to. Right, but, but, but the, the flip side of it is what's also changing your life is how, how much it fucking bothers you. All right, but what if what if I know I'd be miserable anyway sitting at home? Then you should just go uh, and do uh, the Well, game. that's the thing. I, that's the problem. I'm miserable. I can't fucking... I, 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 uh, serious owes me some <laughs> money here. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> 
Do you feel any better after that conversation, Gary? I feel physically exhausted, yeah. and I felt that way after this morning. It's physically exhausting, even though it's only words. I don't know. I mean, Ar- Artie and I came to sort of, I guess, an uneasy truce. But if, if Artie wasn't here, I would have come in and I would have said, you know, is Artie dead to me? Well, of course not. I'm you know, going to deal with Artie all the time. But I don't know that we fully made up. Howard said we made up this morning. What I hope will happen is we'll just, you know, try to s- start over again. You, you, know you know looked I mean? like you were seriously. I, I, I know you looked like you were about to cry. Like no, no I wasn't no, about to cry. No. About to kill you. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, yeah, I'm. What's left unresolved to you? Like, like, w- in what way can you make I this think, right? I think that what we finally came to here is that we both agree to disagree. He look. He says, not telling the truth because he's protecting himself. I should understand all the levels of it. I'm saying I shouldn't. We sort of come to that agreement now, and I now will look at things right. in a different way when we talk. And, and you won't we, be calling him a liar on the wrap up show again, no, no, not unless he's here. All right, we don't have a lot of time, so I want to get a couple calls in real quick. Tim in Pennsylvania, real quick, you're on the wrap up show. Yeah, hey guys. Um, it seems to me, just listening to all this back and forth between Gary and Artie over the past months and whatever, that Gary just seems so jealous of the leniency that Artie gets because Gary's just been under Howard's boot for so long and he never got cut a break. I, that, that's not true. I'm not jealous of the leniency. There's oh, there's just the rules have always been the same for everyone here, more or less, until Artie. When it comes to the whole be at work, be on time thing. Leonard in Texas, you're on the wrap-up show. Well, good morning, guys. Hey, Leonard. I got an answer to Artie's riddle. So, Gary, the answer you should have given him when he was saying, who do you fire, the one that's a bad writer or the one that has bad attendance? The answer is you fire both based on performance issues, and you hire somebody that is a good writer and dependable. It's hard to do that with a word manipulator like Artie. That's an addict's trait. But that's the answer. You fire them both. And yeah, it's not It's not always that easy, and sometimes you do put up with bad behavior for a period of time if it's getting you what you need. John in L.A., you've got the last call on the wrap-up show. Yeah, yeah, I just want to say it was uh, pretty shitty what uh, Gary was warning Howard that Artie would turn on him. I don't, you know, it just wasn't right for him to, you know, say that, I think. You know, Gary, you're just a big lip, giant tooth, smelly eight-man motherfucker. You know what I mean? <laughs> I do. I do know what you mean. collection.
Chào các mọi người và lại là em đây Chuyên bán các dòng xe nỗi, các dòng xe đâm đụng ngập nước Nói chung là vân vân Thì hôm nay em phải giới thiệu cho mọi người một chiếc xe Hyundai i10 Sản xuất 2018 bản 1.2 số tự động Xe phiên bản màu trắng và cũng bị thương bình sĩ một chút Con này thì cũng đã bị bơi lội một chút Đấy, cái đây tầm 5 tháng trước Nhưng mà nó ở mức độ nhẹ thôi Mọi người nhé
Thank you.